Oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry, I was uh, I was eating chocolate. I've been eating chocolate all day. Uh, you know, for reasons. And I was just browsing Tear Maker. <laughs> Listen, you have you have not seen 90% of these. I have not recorded most of them. I've just been finding interesting tears and just talking to myself for the past few days. But uh, I saw this one. And I figured, continuing the theme of uh, self-destructive sadness, uh, why not Dark Souls, you know? You know, Kira's, why not Dark Souls? So, uh, you, are you are basically seeing a live schizo downward spiral. Uh, because occasionally, you know, OBS just kind of turns on for some of these, and it's like, alright, I guess we're talking now. Okay, so, uh, I, I don't have a structure for ranking these. It's going to be how 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 much I arbitrarily like the enemy. You know, does it stand out? Is it worth killing? Is it interesting to fight? Is it a pain in the ass? You know that. Uh, anyway, Stone Demon. These things suck. <laughs> we're, we're starting off with, uh, with a terrible one, frankly. An awful, an awful enemy. Fuck, dude. Fat ass motherfucker, fucking Biggie Smalls, fat ass, spitting fire. God, I hate these things. There's too many of them. You don't get anything for fighting them. They give way less souls than everything else. And if they hit you, I mean, come on, you just, the stun is way too long. These guys suck. Hollows are godlike, though. Uh, try to imagine a Dark Souls 1 without hollows. Yeah, that's what I thought. It would be a really empty world and it would just kind of suck. They, uh, I like hollows. They, they, I'm glad they exist. I like practicing parries on them. I like how you can learn chain backstabs from them. You learn how to fight them, how to fight groups with them. The strategies apply to everything else. The Hollow is one of the best ambient trash mobs in any game ever. Orenstein and Smo are both A tier. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna do the thing. Uh, they're too easy, frankly. They have not aged very well. Now, the, if you understand AI states and you understand how to make them go passive to where they just kind of spend most of the fight slow walking and you do that around pillars, I mean, what do you want me to say? They're like, let's put it this way. Even my first ever playthrough, it did not take me more than three tries to beat this, these guys. It has never taken me more than three tries to beat Orenstein and Smo in any run ever. They are massive fucking overhyped. Mimics are amazing. I, by the way, I did this tier list once, so these things are out of order, and a lot of high tier stuff is stacked up. I I, I fucked the recording up because I can't even press. I cannot even press two buttons in OBS correctly. So, mimics are amazing. I like hitting boxes. They're very rewarding to fight, and fighting them is actually pretty interesting. Figuring out, you know, what do I got to do exactly to stagger them? What's going on? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They do hit a little too hard most of the time, but, you know, nothing wrong with that. Iron Golem is amazing as well. The environment that he's in is cool. I like how the arena plays into the fight, you know, taking out the giant beforehand. I like how you can environmentally kill him. Tarkus is here, so that's a plus. Gwendolyn, by that same virtue, is really good. For the simple fact that Gwendolyn has a cool covenant... A very interesting boss fight. Although, uh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it... Oh yeah, I might be shuffling some of these around as I think about it more and compare things within the same tier. Gwendolyn's boss fight, while the aesthetics are very nice and cool... It's kind of shit. You know, fucking just walking. Just walking. <laughs> yeah. These guys are what I want to see out of human, like, NPC enemies. Unless you set out to farm them, they are they are on the high end of the reward to fight. They are satisfying to fight for the most part, and they are legitimate threats. Balder Swag Knights are fucking awesome, dude. Come on, we've all been there. It's your first playthrough. You got the club. You know, you got club. You walk up, you hit the R1, and he's like, Get that shit out my face! You know, he hits you with the gay parry. And then he fucking... <laughs> with the chest stab and the blood goes everywhere. These guys are dope as fuck. Uh, on the theme of being dope as fuck, Gravelord Nito. I, I promise you, this is not just going to be me uh, giving Dark Souls the biggest rim job ever. A lot of this stuff is going to be C tier or lower, I promise. 
Anyway, Gravelord Naito is, he's good. He's not, he's not, you know, he's not there, but he's close. He's good. If you didn't take the fall damage, he'd be better, but I like how you have to know the game mechanics for divine weapons for skeletons. You have to, you, well, you can bring him to you to avoid fighting the skeletons. There's a lot about this fight that I like. By the same vein, crystal lizards are good. Crystal lizards are a nice treat every time they show up, and they're important and impactful enough that if they despawn, you feel it. You're like, damn. Skeletons are only A tier because of Necromancers. Skeletons are great. There's a lot of them. You can swat them away. They keep coming back. Clearing out the catacombs is an experience. It feels great. Silver Knights are also really good. Damn, I did not do a good job at shuffling these. Sorry, it's only Dark Souls 1 that's like this. I, I, I got to like down here and then something happened. And I was like, fuck, I have to change this. Anyway, so Silver Knights. The old, the old Silver Knights. Not as good as the Black Knights, but they're fun to fight. They're fun to parry. They're fun to backstab. They don't overwhelm you. They don't feel unfair. You can stagger them. They're good. I put Artorias up here for now, but this is subject to change because his boss fight's really not good. His boss fight struggles with a lot of what Dark Souls 1 struggles with, where it's like, oh, I could just walk in and kill the boss in like 30 seconds. It's really easy. But if you go into Artorias slightly undergeared and he's an actual respectable fight, then he's a good boss fight. Fast paced. You cannot you get punished hard for mistakes. There's individual unique mechanics to play around. Mildred is cool because you can summon her and that's about it. Mildred is weak, she's easy. She's in an inconvenient place. But she is rewarding because she basically solos Quelag by herself. And Quelag is a fight people can struggle with. Sif fucking sucks. Look, guys, if you look at it as a boss fight and not as a storytelling tug on your heartstrings kind of thing, Sif, you stand between her legs, like between the four legs, and nothing she can do can hurt you. That's the boss fight. Run underneath her. Stay there. And just keep smacking away at the paws. Poses no threat. She's a free boss fight. Giants are cool. Because of how they're used. Every time a giant is used. It's from something. They're either important story. Like NPCs. Or they are some kind of environmental hazard. More than an actual enemy. So that leads to me really liking them. Because they're creatively used. Ents. Ents are a little ganky. Uh, they show up in a really annoying area with the, the debuffing slow stone knights. But really, other than that, the problem with Ents is that there's just, they've got long range. They're good to fight. You, you need the drops. The drops are relevant. They'll prevent you, you know, they'll save you in the next area. So that's always good. And Gorge Hollows kind of suck because on 60 FPS, you know, modern versions of the game... Excuse me, they, uh, they deal a lot of damage because of 60 FPS and how fire works. They get extra hits in. They do, like, double the damage they're supposed to deal. They also explode, which is funny if you light them on fire. Crystal Knight is good enough that I remember him every playthrough. I don't forget about him. I guess that's all you can really ask for at the end of the day for these kind of generic one-time fights. Crow demons are memorable. They have good environment surrounding them. It makes them a much more interesting fight. Much more gooder, as some fucking Redditor would say. But they are also annoying because they're kind of hard to stagger. And you can't really dodge in any place that you would fight them. I think, you know, trying to get at the top of the stairs for the one miracle for the achievement is really annoying. Priscilla is really good because Priscilla has unique mechanics. And I love figuring out the different ways to counter her. Throwing knives, toxic, you know, feet, looking at the fucking stomps in the snow, that kind of stuff. Good fight, good fight. Interesting mechanics. Quelag is not as interesting. Quelag is the like a quintessential good boss fight. She does nothing wrong, but she doesn't do anything great either, if that makes sense. 
Fun fight, fun fight all around. Can't complain. She's very rewarding. Gives you a lot of souls at a point when you really need it. Black Dragon Calamite suffers from the problem that a lot of dragons suffer from in early Dark Souls. They spend too much of the fight not fighting. You know, flying around, doing something, jumping away from you. They spend too much of the fight playing an entirely different game. Necromancers walked so skeletons can run. And that's really the bottom line because I said so. Basilisks are annoying as fuck. Nah, I'll talk about necromancers a bit. Killing them to put down skeletons for good and them not responding is really good progression. It's environmental progression. So even if you die a bunch progressing the catacombs, you're still making progress. And I'm really sad they haven't really brought anything like that back to that extent. Basilisks are good. They're not great, but they're good. Basilisks will always get you the first couple of times until you really figure out the curse. You know, and doing those quick math, like how much of the curse can I take? Can I stand here for this long? Can I run through and attack this guy, etc., etc.? Calculations going on. These guys avoid the problem that later unstaggerable enemies run into. For the simple fact that there's only ever one, at most two of them at a time that you have to deal with. That that really does a lot. Like, genuinely. With a lot of these big unstaggerable enemies, they'll throw like four of them at once at you. And it's like, well, what the fuck? I can't attack here. And it just leads to not fun. Paladin Leroy just kind of sucks, frankly. Wait, is Havel the Rock on this list? I don't remember seeing him when I was scrolling through. Yo, I think the guy who made this list forgot about Havel the motherfucking rock. Bitch. This bitch ass really did forget about whatever. Anyway, Paladin Leroy, if he was summonable for Nito, he'd be a lot cooler. But instead he invades you for Nito, which is a lot lamer. Well, right before Nito, I should say. Painting Guardians exist in the most stressful goddamn area in the game because I am a little pussy boy and I am very afraid of heights. Deathly scared of heights. And uh, the fact that these guys exist as a distraction in the teetering balancing beam act. Uh, fuck these guys. Knight Kirk just kind of sucks. He's not rewarding to fight and like he's just a generic hollow but with more health and armor. Giant skeletons are worse than regular skeletons in every way. So remember what I was talking about with these sentinels? Yeah, they'll be like, yeah, fuck it. Throw two skeletons and like four regular skeletons at them. Fuck it. Who cares? And it's like, oh, well, that's not that fun to fight. You just spammed enemies, some of which can't be staggered. Godlike, these guys make Manus's arena pop. When you walk into the abyss for the first time and you're like, oh, shit, humans are the dark. And you're like, oh, whoa, dude. It's really solid. Do you know how lame the Abyss would be if these guys weren't there? And I like how they avoid you. Like, they don't want to fight. They just kind of exist. Frog Rays can do a special attack in water. This is objectively provable. People who still disagree with this are morons. And you know what? Frog, t frog Rays are kind of low. They're even lower. For the simple fact, the more I the more I originally had them in B tier, but every single time I talk about them, they're just worse. There's literally three of them in the entire game. They have no purpose. They don't do anything. They don't drop anything of importance. And, you know, they might as well not exist. Yeah, that's I think that's what makes a bad Dark Souls enemy. Could you delete it? Would the game change? If the answer is no, or yes, the game would be made better. That's just get, like my criteria for a bad Dark Souls enemy. <gasps> oh my god, sorry. I don't know where that came from. Flaming Attack Dog. Nah, the remaster fucked these things, dude. They got fucked hard. Like, actually fucked like a whore. They deal like three times as much damage as is intended in the new versions of the game. These guys are good ambient enemies. They really make Blight Town Blight Town. Without them just chilling... It would be uh, just kind of an empty, shitty walk, and it'd be very frustrating. Egg carriers are cool. I like the little environmental interaction they have of, you know, implanting eggs inside of you. The YouTuber's barely disguised fetish. I know someone's going to fucking say it. But nah, it's just cool when enemies have secret interactions that tie into their lore. I like that kind of thing. 
The Chained Prisoner is dope for the simple fact that he deals new game plus damage in new game. Capra demons are lame though. Hard to stagger. They just spam like seven of them in that hallway. The boss fight sucks. Most of the Lost Eyes list shit is absolute garbage. Dark Wraiths are giga godlike. They're fun to fight, they're fun to parry, they're satisfying to chain backstab, they exist in a great area, they have a great story, a great covenant, and they have really cool armor. You can't ask for much more. People who complain about Gwyn being parryable are s bitches. Take a new player who's playing through Dark Souls their first time and doesn't have prior experience and tell them to parry Gwyn. They probably fucking can't. Blow Dart Sniper. These guys are more of an annoyance than anything else. Toxic sucks to deal with. You probably won't have anything to deal with it at the time. They're just going to kill you. You can't really fight back. They're in a very out of the way annoying place most of the time. You can block the dart to avoid most of the toxin though. So that's, that's saving them from irredeemably bad. These guys are dope. It's fun watching them fight things. The super punch is cool. There's really not much to say about it. They're not, you kind of spend a lot of your time running past them though. Sanctuary Guardian is okay. He hits a little on the weaker side for a boss at this point in the game. He's not great. He doesn't have an outstanding story or design. He is just a, a, a mm, he might be C tier actually. He might just be an average. No, if Sif is going to be in C tier, then this guy has to be in B tier because it has never taken me more than two tries to beat Sif. It took me like seven tries to beat this on my first try. Figuring out the range and the magic and stuff. If I need to explain why Manus is arguably the best fight in the entire game, then I... Ah, fuck you. We're, we're shockingly different people if that's the case. Manus is amazing. The pendant, the magic, the hopelessness, the arena, the story. This is the perfect Dark Souls boss. Asylum demons just kind of suck. They're really boring. They've got really telegraphed fast attacks. They have one attack that isn't that, and it's that really goddamn annoying AoE around them that is impossible to fucking gauge the distance on it. Massive souls show up one time, and while, yes, they're cool, they don't do anything. They show up one time. You just walk in, kill them, and you walk away like, what? Valley of the Drakes? More like Bridge of the Five Drakes. Dragons were not done justice until later Dark Souls games. So, you know, there's way too many of them, way too closely packed. There's no easy, comfortable way to fight them. They exist in that uncanny valley of Dark Souls enemies. Where it's like, fuck dude, I really wish there was a more consistent way to deal with this. Man Serpents are cool because they're the complete other end of the spectrum. In that there are consistent ways to deal with them. It's just not fun because of the environment surrounding them. The Four Kings is a great boss fight. I love the glass cannon route of try to only fight two, like one and a half to two kings. Smacking them when they leave. I, they have a unique gimmick and interesting mechanic to support that gimmick in how their health works. Yeah, good boss, good boss. Giant leeches, they are, they are abundant enough that like they knew you were going to be farming them. I'm sorry for the mic sounds. I'm just moving it around a lot. I'm trying to get comfortable. Giant leeches, they knew you would fight a lot of them to farm them, so they made it not a pain in the ass, which really is appreciated in my book. These guys drop a lot of souls, 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 but otherwise they're just retarded goobers. Oh my god, these things suck. Their hitboxes are wonky because of the flaying around tentacles. They have this stupid grab attack that fucking borderline one-shot you most of the time. Yeah, fuck these guys. Oh, also, the Sigward fight, where you have to fight, like, five of them and Sigward can't die. Terrible design. Hate it. These guys just try to break your armor. They don't do anything else. They're annoying. Centipede Demon would be down here, but the fact that you can skip it with the humanity is a nice touch. Otherwise, it's like, why does this boss even exist? And why can't I attack him? He stalks you. There's like three areas you can see him before the boss fight. If you could take like half his health off by attacking him just one time because you know his hidden spots, that would make him a lot cooler. Barbarians show up once in one area and it's like, okay, they're fun to parry. Black Knights are godlike. The fact that they have such an influence on every run makes them so impactful. <laughs> 
they are so impactful for the simple fact that it's like did i get the halberd did i get the sword you know i have straight up restarted runs because i did not get either weapon bone towers might as well not exist damn where are all the f tier enemies i know there's more uh, these guys, again, there's only like three of them in the entire game. They show up five at a time and you have to fight them in an area where you can't dodge. What a fun enemy. Bell gargoyles, they're okay. The, it is mid at best, as you know, as AI Trump would say. It is, it is, other than that, it is just kind of whatever. It's just kind of, there's nothing special about them. And if you fight them as a gank, they become like D tier. Batwing demons are also just pretty middle of the pack. They show up for like two seconds and then they're gone. Gaping dragon sucks. You either fight this boss without taking any damage because you just humped his back leg and like he just did random shit, just charge off into the wall. Or like you lost all your health in one attack. This enemy fucking sucks. Also, the summoner is really annoying because you have to deal with him every time. It's not optional. It makes the boss hit like twice as hard. So the boss already hits really hard. And if you don't deal with that, he hits even harder. This sucks. Oscar has like three lines of dialogue. And then you fight him. And he's really bad and generic and dumb. Well, it's cool that these show the depravity that Seth is willing to go to. Ooh, I wrote that like a game journalist. I'm so proud of myself. Um, th they're just lame. They don't attack you the first time. They just kind of ignore you. You only have to fight them like... You have to deal with them in the cage to get to Logan. Yeah, they're kind of annoying. Phalanx is good for farming souls, but other than that... Other than that, they might as well not exist. They're just weird. The parasitic wall hugger is fucking stupid. You can't stagger it. You can't tell when it's going to attack. You can't dodge in its area. Really, you just, you both are one each other and whoever dies first, dies first. You ignore 90% of these guys. Come on. We all just straight up run past them. Marvelous Chester. He's got enough dialogue to save himself from the mediocrity that is most of the NPCs. King Jeremiah is a caster invader. Do I need to say anything more? Caster invaders are awful. Like, they are really, really bad. They spend most of the fight running around doing nothing. I don't even remember these guys. That's how irrelevant they are. There's so few of them in the game. Moonlight Butterfly is garbage. It is awful. It sucks. <laughs> Moonlight Butterfly sucks. If you have a ranged option, you just win. If you don't have a ranged option, prepare for like the longest boss fight in the game. The clams suck. They run into Seif's boss room and fuck it up. They also exist in Ash Lake for no reason. They're just there. Awful design enemy. This, this is, I, I feel like, hold on, hold on. Add row below and we're going to call this offensively bad offensively bad this these are for enemies that are so fucking bad that it's like holy shit why is this in the game the it is impossible to tell where uh it is impossible to tell how big the radius on their slowdown is if you get hit by their slowdown, you basically die, and you usually have to fight like two or three of these guys at once. This is an enemy where if you removed it, the game would just objectively be made better. These guys are an ambient enemy. You can't really do anything with them. You can't attack them because it's too hard to do so. And, you know, Abyss Guard are the same thing as Ulysseal Residents. You just run past them most of the time. Or they tag you with a single spell and it eats like 70% of your health because hexes are overpowered. Possessed trees are such a good enemy that just exists passively. A lot of people won't even know they're in the game. Giant cats are fucking awful. You have to fight three of them at once and they deal way too much damage. They constantly cover each other's attack uh, windows when you would get a hit in. They suck. Seif the Scalif is also probably the worst boss fight in the game, or one of them anyway. Because you either have enough damage to, you know, you either have enough damage to outpace the curse, 
or you just don't. And trying to avoid the curse means making the fight like five times longer. Other than that, like he doesn't, he only has like two attacks. Crystal Golems are almost in the offensively bad category. This enemy sucks. But I can't say they're offensively bad. They don't make my eyes bleed. But there's too many of them. You have to fight them in narrow spaces where you can fall to your death or get bombed by the Hydra. You can't really stagger them. They deal way too much fucking damage. Their attacks are stilted and awkward. These things don't need to exist, plain and simple. Ceaseless Discharge is offensively bad. Yeah, no, no, I'm fine with putting Ceaseless down here. His cheese is stupid. It's so easy to do, and it ruins the boss fight. If you don't cheese him, you know that giant flame attack that he does? What is the fucking hitbox on that thing, dude? No, seriously, what is it? Like, goddamn, goddamn. God damn, it's Markiplier. It's Mer Markiplier. Sorry. Uh, Ceaseless sucks. Uh, these things are offensively bad as well, dude. What the fuck? Why do they exist? They don't really aggro onto you. They don't give you many souls. There's 50 of them, so they actively lower the frame rate. Like, you could take 90% of these out of the game and nobody would, no, no one would even notice. Actually, no, I would notice. I'd get 20 more frames in Lost Izalif. Ghosts and Banshees are on my shit list. So hold on, look at this, dude. I had to farm for that fucking weapon, for the Knight's Honor achievement, twice. Also, their design philosophy is let them attack through walls and spam like seven of them at a time. It's like the worst part of Dark Souls 2. Slimes are awful in every game, dude. The fact that they have like 80% DR to physical weapons is like, come the fuck on, man. You just sit there and whack away at them for so long. Skeleton beasts are offensively bad. No, seriously, these things suck. They hit like a new game plus plus enemy. You can never stagger them and you don't even have to acknowledge them. You can just run right past them. Why does an enemy like this even exist? Oh, also the Gravelord one. <sighs> Fuck you, dude. Skeleton babies. You know, if they toxic you, they basically ruin your Nito run. Uh, you farm them for humanity. They're basically just a humanity dispenser. Pinwheel has an interesting gimmick, which saves him from complete mediocrity. You also get kindling off of him. Oh, I had to see if you could hear the crinkling of the bad. Bed of Chaos is arguably the worst boss fight they've ever made in any game ever. No, seriously, this is as bad as Dark Souls gets. And if there was even like 20% of the game was comprised of Bed of Chaos level quality, Dark Souls would be like a 6 out of 10 game. Thank God it's just re relegated to this one thing. Taurus Demon is pretty, pretty mediocre. There's one area where they spam like 7 of these fuckers. And it's like, why? God, everything in Lost Isolith is so bad. It's literal just monster closet after monster closet. The Serpent Mages exist to try and knock you off platforms and nothing else. So they suck. Channelers. It's the buff. It's the buff. The f no, no, no. You know what? Channelers are actually very poorly designed because of the buff. If they get the... It is random when they cast the buff. It is possible for them to aggro onto you from really far away. They instantly start channeling the buff. And it's like now there's 10 enemies that kill you in like two hits. And it's like, well, that just straight up wasn't fair. The gardeners are dope. They hit way too hard. Like everything in that fucking DLC. But uh, other than that, they're great ambient enemies. I like just walking across the forest and watching them play with the plants. Tree Lizard? I don't even know how to rate this thing. Dude, there's one of these in the entire game. And it's like, cool. I like the Bandit Hollows. They're a little gank heavy, but, you know, they're otherwise pretty good. Uh, dogs in every game are very poorly designed. Fuck dogs. Undead Crystal Soldiers are really good ambient- What the fuck are you? Where did you come from? Anyway, 
Undead crystal. All the crystal stuff is just kind of up here, dude. It's just, it's perfect for what it is. But it doesn't go above and beyond, which is what's required to get up here, in my opinion. Uh, all the stone shit is bad. Vagrants! Dude, what the fuck? I have to rate a jar? Anyway, uh, vagrants. Vagrants are dope for the simple fact that you probably will never see one most of the time. So when you do see one, the mechanics are really interesting. I wish they would bring him back. Maggots deal so much damage and are so frustrating to fight. Vile. V ah! Vile machinations. Unfit for mortal eyes. Wisps. It's like, why does this exist, dude? Whatever. Wisps aren't as bad as these because they at least pose some threat. And there's some level of counterplay. But uh, this is going to be my Dark Souls 1 tier list. So we stop the Dark Souls 1 music and move on to the best game in the franchise. Dark Souls 2. Okay, there's going to be a good number of these enemies that I'm not super familiar with. A chip off the old rock? Dude, this should be like a Dark Souls trivia enemy. What the hell is this? DS2? A chip off the old rock? What the fuck is this? Oh, is this the gank? Is this what people call the gank? And the dark chasm? What the hell is this thing? Why am I being recommended gay American cartoons? Whatever, man. Look, the ganks in the fucking Chasm of the Abyss are offensively bad. So fuck these guys. Allah, the king's pet, is a pretty decent fight. I really don't have much to say about a lot of the Dark Souls 2 things. Because Dark Souls 2 is, uh, it's Dark Souls 2. Which, by the way, I'm a Dark Souls 2 lover. I think Dark Souls 2 is like A+, plus at the absolute worst. Abandoned Hollow. These guys are pretty cool. They're not as good as the tried and true Hollows, but they really fill out the world nicely. What the fuck are you? I can't even read that. I'm losing my sight. Abyss Ironclad. All of the Abyss enemies are... The Chasm of the Abyss is the worst area in Dark Souls 2. Dude, what the fuck? That's like five lines of text. Hold on, I gotta like zoom in super hard for this. Hold on. Afflicted grave robber, afflicted. Oh, this is the gank. This is the chasm of the canyon of the abyss of the old of the fucking. Oh my god, fuck that. Aldia Warlock? I'm familiar with this enemy, I just don't know the actual official name. Oh, Aldia Warlock. So I have to actually, like, look up where this is. Yeah, Aldia Warlock location. I I'll know it the second I see it. I just do not remember this enemy. It's that fucking bad. I don't remember it. Oh my god, I know exactly where this is about to take me. I totally remember this. Buddy, what are you doing? This guy shoots, like, purple magic flame at you, doesn't he? Yeah, this fucking guy. Holy shit, dude. This guy is the definition of mid. This is literally the definition of mid. He's just a spellcaster with some, some, some melee guys around him. And there's like literally only one of them in the entire game. And I think he was only added in Scholar, which was the downgrade of Dark Souls 2. Aldia is not a good boss fight. I don't know anyone who likes him as a boss fight. He is somehow just as worse at, or just as bad as fucking Nishandra. However, alone knights are really solid. If you take the area slowly, if you are on your fifth run back to the smelter demon and there's like you fight, you have to deal with like a seven man gank hoping to get to the fog door first. 
that's when they kind of suck. But that's not how I'm rating this because I'm not bad and I don't have to do that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, these are the fucking exceptional individuals that sit under the water in the Shrine of Amana. Fuck them, kids. Too many of them, they hit too fast, and they're the the second worst area in the game. Amana Priestess? <laughs> I hate these things so much. <coughs> these guys, the, as an enemy, they're not bad. But as a complete package... Fuck these guys. Fuck Shrine of Amana. Oh my god. The ancient dragon is about as bad as a dragon fight can get. So much of this fight is downtime. So many of his attacks instantly kill you. It's not fun. He's got so much health. This is like a 12 minute fight if you aren't like specking for it. It's 12 minutes of constant one shot threats. It is really lame. Archduke Pilgrims are a cool enemy, but they exist in fucking Shrine of Amania. Skeleton. Woo. Actually, these skeletons are worse because there's no necromancers and they are not as satisfying to fight. Because Dark Souls 2 is just a little slower and chunkier. And I feel like spam trash mobs don't work well in that chunky environment. I promise I'm not a Dark Souls 2 hater, dude. There's just... They really they really hit you. It's because all the Abyss and uh, Amadia enemies are first because they all start with A. And these are just the two worst parts of the game. Armor Den... Who the fuck is Armor Dennis? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, DS2 Armor Dennis. Who the fuck is Armor Dennis? I don't remember this at all. Oh, it's another scholar spirit. I don't think I've ever fought this particular dark spirit in my life. But he is just a generic dark spirit with a sword and shield. So he's automatically just whatever. Kind of thing that I walk up, parry once, and then we move on. Ashen Crawler. Isn't this from the fucking worst DLC, the snow one? Hold on, let me just let me just double check. Because again, this is not standing out in my head. I'm just not remembering where they are. Broom Tower. Okay, yeah, these are the fucking Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, these guys are fucking annoying. There's a bit too many of them. They hit hard. They're low to the ground. Enemies that are low to the ground kind of suck. Ashen Idol is barely an enemy. Why is this even on here? I don't know how to rate this thing, honestly. Ashen Warriors are pretty cool. You know, they're a fairly generic big knight with a big weapon. Estelle of Mira is more satisfying to fight. So she gets C tier because for the simple fact that the two, the, the Mira people have two handed weapons and two handed invaders are a lot more satisfying than shielded invaders because they don't have the option to just sit behind their shield and they'll actually engage with you. Astrologer, dude, what the fuck? This is another enemy where there's only like three of them, right? Astrologer. Where are you located again? Yeah, Iron Passage. Yeah, I did not play this DLC too, too, too much. But... From what I remember of these guys... They're just... There. Which, that describes a lot of stuff in Dark Souls 2. They're just... There. You know, they aren't doing anything wrong... But they just exist to fill out the world. This guy invades you multiple times. So he he he's a good invader. The fact that I remember him. And I remember like three different invasion points for him. Like the castle. Look. The castle invader. Which is what this guy is. Is really good. This thing is a fucking bug. This is a sponge. Everything in that area where before the rotten just kind of sucks, if I'm being frank with you. Everything is too beefy. It just kind of flails around. 
Listen, I really do not have a much to say about these trash mobs in Dark Souls 2. Because Dark Souls 2's did a lot of mob spam. So enemies weren't super interesting individually. Oh, on the other hand, I actually really like these guys. They're imposing. They pose a big threat. Actually, I'm putting them up here. If you have to deal with them with just melee, then they kind of suck. But, you know, other than that, they're really good. Oh my god, sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. Barrel carrier? Bro, the fact that this is a hollow holding a barrel automatically gets B tier for barrel. Bell keepers! Bell keepers suck. They are going into D tier. All the bell keeper shit is going into D tier. For the simple fact that the bell keeper covenant is for fucking losers who can't PvP without NPCs to back them up. All my memories of these guys involve fighting some fucking sweaty tryhard who tries to hide behind as many of them as possible. I didn't even know you got invaded by a blue sentinel. But he has a shield, so he's automatically a bad invader. All the Dark Souls... You know what? All Dark Souls 2 invaders with shields go down here. Just straight up. Unless they're memorable. Because every fucking invader with a shield spends half the fight just backwalking with their shield up. Bowman Gunther. This guy doesn't have a shield, so he's automatically a better fight. The Burnt Ivory King, however, is an amazing boss fight. The first, this is the first S tier for Dark Souls 2. And I mean, come on, was there really, was there really ever any doubt, as the spy would say? Great story, great arena, great mechanics, unique mechanics that no other boss in the series has. This is an example of Dark Souls 2 at its best. I wish the name was bigger. Who the fuck are you? I'll be honest, this looks like a mage, and I never, I don't think I ever fought this guy. So, uh, you know. Mages are like archers. In that they're, yeah, this is where I put King Jeremiah as well. Katarina Knight has a two-hander, and two-handers are a lot better to fight than anything else. Dude, can I just make a fucking Dark Souls 2 invader tier? Like, oh my god, there's a lot of these. And a lot of them are New Game Plus exclusive, so I did not fight a lot of them. Uh, this is a two-hander, if I remember right. So this is going up here. These guys are also pretty S-tier. They're fun to fight. They're fun to figure out. And they really set the stage. You know, for like the, the Lost King and his Lost Men fighting to the end. I really like them. There is one of these in the entire game, and they do not do anything. This, I don't, why is this enemy even in the game? It's not, like, actively bad, like the F tier enemies, but it doesn't really contribute, you know what? It doesn't really contribute anything. Yeah, no, C tier is, like, for the, the more better design stuff. Covetous Demon is offensively bad. This fucking, this fight is just... Terrible. This is another NPC I don't remember. You're getting arbitrarily just plopped in D tier. Dark Priestess. I have nothing to say about you. Other than I generally enjoy spellcasters. These guys are awesome for the simple fact that... Oh, dude, I'm between B and A tier. We'll put them in A tier for now. Hold on, let's see. Are they as good as the Four Kings? No. Are they as cool as Vagrants? No. Are they as cool as Mimics? Actually, yeah, because of the torch mechanic. Yeah, no, I think they belong. They hit hard as fuck, and they do tend to spam them, but the torch mechanic single-handedly makes them really interesting. Dark Lurker is about as good as Dark Souls 2 is gonna get. Curse Jars are... They're not offensively bad, but they're bad. Curse Jars is a fucking... Motherfucker, this shit is a sponge. This is a jar. Why am I rating a jar? Am I really just that fucking messed up and sad that I am now raiding Jar- Okay, whatever. Jar Tearless next. I swear to God, I don't remember this thing. Dark Sucker? So is it a black guy that gives blowjobs? 
Dude, I straight up do not remember the Dark Sucker. Yeah, Black Gulch. Oh, wait. These are those things. Yeah, sorry. The picture was just kind of shit. I'm going to be real with you, Chief. This is a fucking sponge. I have never sat and fought and, like, analyzed these in my life. <laughs> I just know that they fit in the area. They're kind of cool. They shoot stuff at you, so... They are like an average ambient enemy. The Demon of Song is just kind of cool. That's it. I like the I like that the mini mechanic of only attacking when its weak spot is, you know, like giant enemy crab style. Sorceresses, the 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 BDSM mage set. Uh, let's see. Are they fun to fight? Yes, I like fighting spellcasters. I said that before, and I'm glad I said that before. Hmm. This one's kind of hard. Because they only show up in one area. Yeah. No. They're memorable. The fact that people mod their armor set into games to this day. I feel like speaks volumes. They have a very memorable design because of Coomer Bait. They're actually somewhat interesting to fight because their pyromancy hits hard, so you can't just treat them like a joke. Bro, who the fuck are you? Go into D tier and leave me alone. Dragon Acolyte. These guys look cool, but and they're only in like one area. But they actually serve a purpose, and they aren't they aren't painful to fight. Yeah, I feel like C tier is a good place for enemies that aren't painful to fight. Dragon Knights, however, are really cool. And the fact that they will leave you alone as long as you're, like, honorable when fighting the Ancient Dragon is so fucking cool. Generic Dragon. I'd say that there's B tier. Yeah, that's up there with, like, Basilisks and stuff. Oh, another invader? Bro, get away from me. Dragon Rider is actually really good. I find him incredibly satisfying to fight. Even the, the gank boss version. I like figuring out his moveset. He feels good to dodge around. He's got a good arena both of the times you fight him. Yeah, he's a good boss. Drake Blood Knights look cool. They feel good to parry. I love their armor. Yeah. This is a good, this is what a good Dark Souls enemy looks like. It's memorable, you know? I remember it. I actually know what DLC this is from, you know? These guys, these guys, yeah, D tier is pretty fitting actually for these guys. They're just, they're big. There's a lot of them. You have to fight them around a bunch of little guys. Uh, quintessential bad Dark Souls 2 enemy. Can't be staggered, so you have to like fight them on their own. What is the name of this enemy? Executioner. Oh, these are the big guys in the forest. I actually like them because they use some restraint when they, uh, you know, send them at you. They don't just send like 15 of them at once. Giants are satisfying to fight. So I think they go into B tier for the simple fact that they aren't like, you know, they aren't generic. Yeah, they're pretty good. Who the fuck are you? You're a bell keeper. Go away. I really do not like the bell keepers. I don't like any bell keeper anything. The Farab Knight Invader actually does stand out in my head a little bit. So we'll put him at the top of C tier. The spiders? Oh my fucking god, dude. Spiders are a C tier enemy. They are mid as fuck. They're, they don't... They don't you know, they're not good, but they're not bad either. Uh, this, the queen lady. I really don't like this boss fight, honestly. Yeah, you, you belong in C tier. Why am I like either? Uh, the fact that she summons the one paladin guy is kind of cool. She's either too easy or too hard, depending on if she does that move or not. Who are you? Executioner Chariot, get the fuck out of my game, dude. 
They just, just, they're making a left turn. NASCAR boss, woo! NASCAR boss, NASCAR boss, vroom. Falconeers are actually a very interesting enemy, dude. Bro, he throws a bird at you. He throws a bird at you. Come on. This might be S tier. This is uh, Sharon. Sharon is like the most memorable goddamn Dark Souls invader. Oh my god, I hate these things. There's like five of them in one area. They all shoot fucking fireballs at you. You have to go into that area. To grab a key item. Quintessential aggravating Dark Souls enemy. There's a bunch of them. They have ranged AoE attacks. They hit hard. They hit hard. You, you just breathe a sigh of relief every time you're done with them. The Flexile Sentry has a cool gimmick, but this boss is cheapened because it shows up later as a regular enemy and not in a cool way. Just He's just kind of just like, I'm there. What is your name? Foreign Wanderer? Where the fuck do these guys show up? Oh, these are the things betwixt guys. These guys have a name. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> See, this would just be lumped under hollow in Dark Souls 1. Yeah, man, they're hollows. They're Dark Souls 2 hollows. Here, you take your place. No, 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 no. They aren't as good as those hollows. But I got a thing for hollows, okay? Oh, these guys, the feces, the shit guys. Mm, they really do make that one area though that area no see this is what I mean you could put these wanderer guys in place of these guys and nothing changes it's actually it would make these guys better forlorn uh, you know I have to do it if you've played through dark souls 2 you've had to deal with forlorn like 17 fucking times it's got a soft spot in my heart This is the worst. This is worse than the bed of chaos. This is that fucking horse that just like wills itself into existence next to you. Fume Knight. I like him. He's top of A tier. I don't quite think he's S tier material. But uh, Fume Knight is really solid. He's like he's like in between here and here. Ah, jeez, excuse me. I'll probably change my mind on these two quite a lot, actually. What the fuck are you? Oh, the fume sorcerer. Nah, whatever. You exist. Now, you've got a cool design, design and you exist, so. Oh, these guys, they throw spells at you, and they're good wardens. Actually, you know what? These guys are so unique and interesting, and they show up, like, sparingly enough that I actually feel like they deserve B tier. They aren't just, like, generic filler. What the fuck are you? Ghost of Prince's Past. I don't even remember this guy. So right at the D tier he goes. Giant Lord is not a fun fight. Go into D tier and stay the hell away from me. This guy's not very fun. He uh, He's another foot boss where you stand by his feet and he just kind of can't do anything. You will never experience half of his attacks. You guys remember when Dark Souls 2 was new before Scholar of the First Sin? And if you wanted to soul farm, you would get Soul Geyser. Go up to this guy. Go to the area off to the left. Shoot the Soul Geyser. Kill him instantly. Grab the bonfire aesthetic and loop that like 99 times. I remember that. Those were the days. What the fuck are you? What is a Grand Tusk? Oh, the boar? Dude, this looks like a fucking... This looks like a Warcraft 3 picture! The truffle quest is cool, and that's the only reason you're getting a C tier. You know what? These guys actually stand out. 
I remember the, the Grave Wardens. Yeah, I think C tier is fair for the Grave Wardens. Oh, Bish, come on. Get into D tier. You're another invader. Bellkeeper. Go fuck yourself. Uh, Two-handed invader, so you can get C tier. But you're two-handed with a shield. I don't remember what that does to the AI. Just because you're a fucking red version of the literal shit throwers. What is this? Oh, this is the guardian dragon. Okay, I remember this. Uh, sorry, the picture is crispy as fuck. This guy is a satisfying dragon fight, so he can have beef here. Yeah, he's about as on par with Calamite as terms of how interesting he is. Oh, I like the grab. The grab feel good to fight for some reason. Walk in there, hit him with a power stance, great swords. The Graham, there's so many C and D tier things in Dark Souls 2 because there's just such a fucking variety of things in Dark Souls 2. <laughs> These guys have like two attacks, you know? Viking. <laughs> this is another generic enemy with like two attacks. Oh, these guys are the Shrek guys. I like them because most of the time they'll just poison themselves and kill themselves. These are more Vikings. Get into C tier with your brother. Hald Knights, however, are baller. They are the baller swag knights of Dark Souls 2. Fun to fight. There's a healthy amount of them. And in the original Dark Souls 2, if you wanted to collect their weapons and their armor set, you just fought them randomly in the world. They were like, they were actually were more in common with the Black Knights. Very cool enemy. Motherfucker, this is a sponge. Crawling enemies are always bad in Dark Souls, and Dark Souls 2 crawlers are no exception. I really like the Dark Souls 2 Soldier Hollows. I love how you find them in these old battlefields where they just kind of lumber around. I love how it's like, oh, fuck, you know, there's like five of them, but they don't pose enough of a threat that spamming them actually matters. You can get some chunky collateral hits with big weapons on them. They feel good to fight. These are enemies that I'm really glad exist. Hollow Mage. Bro, there's like two of these in the entire game. Going to C tier. Hollow Peasant is actually going to be, even though they're a relatively generic enemy, they're a cool generic enemy. And they come at you in that big glob and they remind me of Resident Evil 4, so I subjectively like them. Hollow Priest, however, can fuck off. He does nothing. He doesn't do anything. Oh my god, there are so many trash enemies that could be condensed down in Dark Souls 2. Uh, the big elephants is just a big armored elephant. I don't know what you want me to say. No, you know what? This enemy is unique as fuck. Actually, there's nothing else like it in the entire franchise. So, uh, that alone means I'll never forget them. So they can't be C tier. Hollow prisoner. Look, I got a thing for hollows. I got a soft spot for them, but... Jesus Christ, dude. This this enemy is literally just like... Excuse me. This enemy. Like, there's no difference between the two. Hollow Rogue. Get into B tier, buddy. You are a hollow and a rogue. I'm glad you exist. You're just like a generic dude. Oh, the Royal Soldiers actually deserve A tier. These guys are these guys have a very unique design. And they are the same thing as the infantry. Just lost, they're just abandoned, forgotten, and lost soldiers. F just cursed to roam the battlefield because they, you know, gave up. Oh my god, this is the third fucking Viking. <laughs> like these three are the same enemy. Infantry. Oh, these are the time warp guys. I'm glad they exist. 
they really remind you that Dran Lake was a functioning castle with a functioning military. Huh. I, I don't know where else to put this. It doesn't have a picture. I don't even know what a juvenile hollow is. Iron Warrior. I remember this. I just need a refresher. Dude, he sounds like a wrestler. Iron Warrior, Iron Warrior. Broom Tower. Oh yeah, you're one of these. These guys are, uh, you know. If I remember correctly, they're alright. They just don't stand out to me. Oh, I thought I just closed the fucking tier list. I was about to scream and cry. I was literally about to go run in my bed and fucking cry. Uh, these guys are okay. They don't stand out. I'm glad they're there. They just round out the area nicely. But I guess they don't need to do anything else to get into C tier. Ironclad soldiers are very cool. I like turtles. I like when they uh, lay down on people and kill them instantly. That was always funny in multiplayer. It's another phantom. Ah, these guys are actually kind of cool. Welcome to the club of not being a generic crappy enemy. You can shut off the <laughs> You can destroy the bells by attacking them from behind, which shuts a lot of these guys off. Also, they dropped the coolest sword in the series and my favorite sword in any Dark Souls game. The, uh, because it can cast magic, which I fucking love. Magic. I love dex builds. Yes, I am the femboy twink who loves dick and dex int builds. Uh, listen, bro. Listen, brother, man. I don't fucking remember this enemy. And if I can't remember it, it's automatically bad. If if I have zero recollection of you, then you failed to leave an impression on me. These guys hit way too hard. And they have a shield. They have the damage of a two-handed enemy, the speed of a one-handed enemy, and the shield to make them take forever to kill. They're also in a really annoying area where you're constantly getting cursed. Thank you, Dark Souls 2. Thank you for finally giving me something to rave about. The Looking Glass Knight looks cool, has a great song, and has one of the most interesting and unique gimmicks ever with the summoning mechanic. God, I love this boss fight. And as a result, the Looking Glass spawn is S tier as well. The Lost Sinner. Honestly, the fact that the Lost Sinner has so many little environmental things that make the fight really easy. Ah, uh, no. There's the New Game Plus version where they just spam you with two of the most dangerous phantoms in the game. New Game Lost Sinner is S tier. New Game Plus Lost Sinner is A tier. I love gank bosses. I love gank bosses. I love gank bosses. Go away, dude. Uh, oh, the mannequins. Mannequins are kind of unique. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know what to do with this. This is just a generic filler enemy. Okay, we've got a lot of summons here that I don't remember. Okay, if it's a summon and I don't remember it, it goes into D tier. Let's just get them all out of the way. Or wait. Nameless Usurper. I remember this one, so you automatically go up to, like, B tier, dude. I don't remember you. I don't remember the Collector. Roy the Exployer is memorable, so, you know, he goes up there. I don't know who the fuck this is. Yeah, dude, all of these red invaders, all of them go into D tier. Because I do not remember 90% of these things. I honestly want to just make a tier for like Dark Souls 2 invader. Because there's so fucking many of them. Oh god, rats. No, the rats in Dark Souls 2 suck. 
There's a lot of them. They're really small. They're really hard to hit. They're really frustrating. I like the environmental interaction she has. She also has a summon for easy mode if you need it. And her moveset is pretty diverse and interesting. Only time I'll be praising diversity. Nishandra is offensively bad for a final boss. If she was a midpoint boss, whatever. But it's like, really, bro? This is the fucking last boss? This is what it's all been building to? Fuck you. These guys are cool, and they come out of nowhere, so they leave a lasting impression. So they go into B tier. Ogres are like onions! Whatever. It's, a, it's cool that they exist in the world. I can't give the Iron King higher than C tier, in good faith. I just, I just can't. I literally just can't, dude. I'm sorry, but I just can't. The Iron King is like... The arena you fight him in is so bad. That hole... Oh my god, I've fallen into that hole so many times. Old Knight. Oh, I remember these guys. Uh, they're just kind of more generic Drang Lake army guys. Hold on, I've got to squint for some of these. Oh my god, they have the tree in here? You know you can actually make this tree repair your equipment? He's got a unique interaction, so he goes into B. Uh, these guys are just like statues. They just like exist to fill space. The giants are actually kind of cool. They're kind of annoying to fight though. And you mostly just run past them. But if you do decide to fight them, you'll find they're a pretty unique en enemy. This is an environmental hazard. <laughs> You're going next to the jar, buddy. What is that? Oh, the poison mushrooms. Yeah, okay, dude. These are D or F tier. Nah, they're F tier, man. They fucking suck. They just sit there and they poison and that's all they do. We've got... Oh, poison moth. Fuck these things. Actually, no. They aren't as bad as like rats, but they do... Man, Dark Souls 2 has a lot of mediocre enemies in it. The poison moths are kind of cool. You have to snipe them. There's like 12 hidden ones. Possessed armor. I don't even remember you, so go into F tier. You know what? I am a sucker for fan service, so this guy goes up there. Prowler hound? What is a fucking prowler hound, dude? I, I don't remember this. Go into F tier. Prowling Magnus. Uh. Yeah. He's mid at best. Doesn't stand out. Doesn't do anything better than anything else. If it wasn't for the janky ass hitbox on his stab, he would be up here. Just, just saying that right now. I love the environment. You can use the ballista. I love how you can take him out early for the sword ring. I love how there's multiple of him. I love the role he plays. Really like the pursuer. Dude, they got the fucking rampart hedgehog on here. Oh my god, whatever. Go into C tier. The rampart golem. I remember this guy being really annoying. I remember him like frustrating me. I don't remember why. Look, I'm going to be honest, dude. Everything in that ice DLC was just kind of mid. Just kind of mid at best. Because that ice DLC sucked until you got to the very end. I don't think that's very controversial. Vermin? Rotten vermin? Whatever, dude. Go into the fucking forgettable tier. It's like F for forgettable. Royal Rat Authority is offensively bad. This boss fight, same with the Royal Rat Vanguard, but no, 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 no. Royal Rat Authority, fuck this. This is the hardest boss in the entire game. This boss is literally just spam, 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 spam. There's like 15 fucking enemies that all hit really fucking hard. Oh my god, this is the worst designed boss. This is as bad as the Bed of Chaos. 
I actually really like these guys. Fun to fight. There's a lot of them. They look very cool. I like their armor set. It's got good stats, so it's worth it to kill them. Ruin Sentinels. Ruin Sentinels are another A tier boss. These guys are really good. I mean, that's really all. Just they're good. Their strategy in fighting them. They aren't completely overwhelming. I like it every time they show up. Oh my god. Enemies that run at you in suicide, especially in tight spaces like these guys. Cheap fucking enemy. Very cheap enemy. Oh, these are the, all the knights from the poison. These guys would not be in D tier if, uh... If they, you didn't just run past every single one of them. You never have to fight them. And fighting them is a total waste of time. I like her story. I like how she actually has like more than two attacks. You can summon for her if you want. There's that unique interaction with her popping up and then like getting on her back and stuff. You know what? That might warrant A tier actually. Whatever, you are another, like, phantom. Go into D tier. Sin the Slumbering Dragon. Where the fuck are you? Uh, Sin is... He's, a, he's an old Dark Souls dragon. What else can I say? He needs no introduction, and he needs no explanation. And uh, I'm not going to provide either. Sir Alon is an S tier boss. Oh, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, the Skeleton Lords. More like the Skeleton Snores. You either get overwhelmed by the trash mob spam and die to it, or you just run up to these guys and kill them instantly, and then like Ultra Great Sword, Sword, one swing, kill like five skeletons. These guys are just generic shit spam boss. Smelter Demon has a bit too big hitboxes, Hits like 10% too hard. But I'll be damned if he is not a fucking wall that just absolutely... He's like the ONS get good of Dark Souls 2. And I love him for it. What are you? Stone Knight? Hold on. DS2 Stone Knight. What the fuck is a Stone Knight? It's a stone, Luigi. This is before the looking last night. It's a stone, Luigi. You didn't make it. This is what I mean. These guys, there's like five of them in the entire game. They show up in one area. And I did not remember them. But you know what? They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Stone warriors, on the other hand, are not pretty cool. Oh, wait, these guys? I remember these guys. They act as, like, bosses in a lot of areas, but you can bypass them by just killing them. They take little to no damage unless you parry or backstab them. So, you know, they're fucking cool. Bro, what is this thing? A sex toy? I, I don't remember the imperfect. I'm going to be real with you. I literally do not remember this boss. What the fuck is this thing? Oh! This isn't a boss. This is uh at the end of the Sin DLC. They're like failed dragon. They have a cool story. But... As an enemy, they're absolutely fucking miserable to fight. They are miserable to deal with as an enemy. The last giant is dope. I like when he rips his arm off and starts beating your ass with it. Throne, Watcher, and Defender. Probably should have just been the last boss, if we're being honest. I like the revive mechanic. I like how you have to 
think about your damage output on them. You can't just nuke one like you would with ONS. It actually feels like they learned from the ONS encounter, but it's it's not as good. Oh my god, there's two more invaders. Get into the tier already. Vendrick? Up in S tier. For the simple fact that his story, his lore, his music, and needing the giant souls really ties him into the world and rewards you for all that little exploration that you've done up until this point. Oh. Hold on. Let me go back in order. Duke's dear Freya is a mid at f as fuck boss. Nah, you know what? Fuck Freya. This boss isn't even mid. It's just shit. Like, it's a giant spider. You can only attack its weak spot. And its weak spot is where it attacks you from. So, like, half the time, it's just doing random attacks that you aren't even near. And if you try to get near it, you'll get clipped by them. Nah, fuck that. Okay, what are these next couple of enemies? This is a dog. Fuck dogs, dude. Fuck them dogs. The Rotten. Very satisfying. Very easy to learn. Very good soul farm with aesthetics. This is a sponge, dude. This is a pig that exists outside of Majula. Oh, no, wait. This is the Truffle Quest guy. You're pretty cool. I guess. I uh, I don't remember you, so go into F tier for forgettable. Undead apparition is. I'm glad it exists. Uh oh, the undead crypt knights, they actually stand out and really feel like they belong. I I like all the crypt enemies. If I'm being honest with you, the crypt enemies are just kind of cool. Like, that's really all it is. They're cool. They really feel like they're there to, for a purpose. They add some weight to the area. Oh, these guys really stand out in the forest. And they, they, they make the forest more memorable. Instead of just being, like, generic hillbilly or whatever, they're a fucking abomination. I like Velstat a lot. I like the buff mechanic. I like how there's actually something to think about. Uh, go, uh, I don't remember this enemy. Go into F tier for forgettable. Wall Watcher is, uh, honestly not bad NPC human fi Huh? It's not a bad NPC human fight, so it's there. It's like, it's a lot like the tree huggers. Wall Spectre. I mean, it's a sponge. Come on. And the dead eye. I don't remember this guy, but he'll go up there with the rest of them. Okay, that was that was a little scuffed. I'm not gonna lie. Dark Souls 2 has so many miscellaneous fucking trash enemies that it's like it's a little hard to rate all of them. I'm not gonna lie. Dark Souls 3, however, has far less things in it, and there's far more of a purpose to each thing. So there's also a lot better things in here. Aldrich, we're immediately starting with a heavy hitter. Aldrich, the Devourer of Gods, is fucking dope, dude. I like running away from the arrows. I like the story. I like how he's got one of my favorite boys on his, uh, his, his belt, basically. Okay, Ancient Wyvern is offensively bad. The fact that you just have to drop attack him is stupid as fuck. Angels are terrible. <laughs> Before they were nerfed, they would have gone in offensively bad. Now that they're nerfed, they just kind of don't pose a threat. They're just a mild annoyance. These guys hit hard AF. The wing knights. There, you also have to fight two of them at a time. No, it's the gank. The gank aspect makes me put them in C tier. The fact that they gank you and they kill you in like three hits leads to a really annoying bullshit situation. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're on Dark Souls 3. 
I have to change the music. I forgot. I almost forgot. Don't worry. I'm the best there is. The best there was. The best there ever will be. Black Hand. Oh, yeah. This guy. He's just kind of a generic human battle. Oh, I like Outrider Knights a lot. They're really unique. They've got great droppings. You want to kill it. If you die to it, you want to go back and fight it again. Because it usually, you got it to at least half health. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck, man. This thing has a lot of souls. I gotta kill that. Brigands are just filler acceptable enemies. I like the jump scare these guys do. The first time you see them. So, like, you know, they're filler enemies. Okay, C tier has become the generic, like, filler enemy tier for the most part. What is this? Is this the thing that summons the angel? Oh, no, this is the Karthus Sandworm. The fact that he's in more of an environmental hazard and you just kinda can't fight him by nature of how every time he moves, he deals damage everywhere. And, like, you just sit there behind him and let the ballista kill him 90% of the time? Yeah, he kind of just sucks. He just kind of sucks. Let's, let's be honest. Karthus Swordsmen. Yoink. They're actually interesting to fight. They're just, like, a generic... They're, like, a C-tier generic fight, but with a little more oomph behind it. Oh, these big-ass knights? These guys. I can't give them C-tier. Looking at how most of the Dark Souls 2 clutter enemies, these are just a higher caliber of clutter enemy. You know? That's really what B-tier is. It's just for the more higher caliber things that round out the world. Uh, fuck gank bosses, dude. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck gank bosses. Oh my god. Champion Gundir? The fact you can parry him is on another level. Oh, this is our first Dark Souls 3 S tier. This is a fight that I used to dread because of how hard it was. But this fight was emblematic of Elden Ring's design going forward. And God, am I glad for that. What is your name? Corpse Grub. Yeah. I like the torch interaction. I like how unique they are. How you won't confuse them for anything else. Oh, carrion knights. I actually don't like them. They're a little too far. You cannot just like walk up and stun them with staggers. You can't really parry them. If at all. And they just kind of spam a bunch of attacks at you. And they also hit a little too hard for how fast they attack. Uh, excuse me, young man, what is your name? Oh, Corvian Settler. As an enemy is like F tier, but it's just world filler. Ah, these guys. These guys are just kind of whatever world filler. I like how you can kill them while they're transforming though, so that's cool. This is the sorcerer that gives you the spell book. He's going in B tier for the simple fact that this is how you learn soul air or soul spear. Yeah, I'm that petty. Now, if I was a redditor, I would do this. Crab. It is time for crab. But uh, we'll put him in C tier for crab tier. If I had a SpongeBob soundboard ready to go, I'd be like, I like money or something. Crystal Sage is not... Nah, the Crystal Sage is like the worst boss fight in, uh... Yeah, he's just not interesting. He either is a roadblock for your build or your specific challenge run. Uh, because of the time you're fighting him. Or you just walk in and you literally throw him on the bed and you just fucking ravish him. Curse Rotted Greatwood is, uh, not much better. Very shitty gimmick boss. I love Dancer. I love how you can go fight her at level, soul level like tw like 20. I like how uh, if you're using the starting like Brigand Twin Swords, this fight is your damage output can actually match it at 20. It just feels like a very well designed fight. 
Medir is the best dragons get before Elden Ring, but I cannot in good conscience after playing Elden Ring as much as I have look back at the dragon fights in Dark Souls and say they are anything of any note. I just can't. I'm sorry. The dragons in Elden Ring are so good. Deacons of the Deep? More like puts me to sleep. Where did you go? Oh. Yeah, deacons are just a bad boss. Might as well not exist. Uh, this is the NPC gank uh, in the library. I don't like this. This has killed me a lot. Because you've got a ranged guy, a sorcerer, and like two knights. And it's like, it's just kind of a lot. Huh? What is this thing? Oh my god, this is that big spider enemy that shows up like twice in uh, the deep area. I guess he can have B tier for being a change of pace, but... Oh, I don't like these demons. These demons suck. <laughs> they just might as well not exist because of how unthreatening they are. Hmm, do they belong up here or do they belong here? Where do they belong? So let's let's talk let's talk if they were S tier. Parrying them is satisfying. Their theme is great. Their story is great and tragic. Their the area preceding them is not great at all. You know what? The run back is what kills it. The fight is S tier, but the run back is pretty fucking bad. Demon Princes. These guys are pretty good. I'm not a fan, actually. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of the Demon Prince. Same with the Demon of Pain. Wait, do I not remember the Demon Prince? I straight up confused these two in my head. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just remember me which one this is. Wait, you, you, whatever, dude. Generic demons are always a blast. I actually really like fighting them. You get a lot of souls. You usually never have to go toe to toe with them if you don't want. You can have the mimic fight the one in uh, Isolith. You can have uh, Siegward for the other one. Very nice enemy. Where, uh, where did these go? Wherever these went in the previous one, they're going a tier above this invader. For the simple fact that you see this chick at the end of the world. I'm going to tell you right now, everything at the end of the world is more impactful for me. You know, it just, it hits different, as they say. The atmosphere single-handedly raises this, these enemies up in that area. What are you? Oh, these are the hollows with the cloaks on their head. Welcome to B tier. You are a filler enemy that actually serves a purpose other than just being filler. Welcome to the club. If it wasn't for those fuckers on the side attacking you with off screen ranged projectiles, he would be S tier. But he's a very good fight, a very satisfying fight. Ah! You know, this is going to be the longest video I've ever made. This just dawned on me. I've still got, like, Sekiro and Elden Ring to go through. This is going to be, like, a three-hour video. Jesus Christ. Whatever. Uh, Drake Blood Knights. Where did you go in Dark Souls 2? Like, B tier, I think? Or was it A tier? Okay, well, that's where you go here as well, because you have not changed. Grave Wardens are the same exact thing as uh, these guys. Elder Gurus are scary as fuck, but you know what? I actually think they're D tier. You fight them in the, just such an annoying area. They have what would otherwise be a fun moveset to dodge, but you fight them in an area with restricted dodge. I like Evangelicals because I like parrying them straight up. Fallen Knights look cool, but they're just generic human fights. Uh, these are just basic generic dudes. There's nothing to say about them. 
Fire witches are cool until you get to that final area where there's like three of them and you have to dodge all their spells at once. I don't like the gargoyles and uh, I actually think they're kind of F tier. Wait, is the gargoyles as bad as the beta chaos? No, beta chaos is below them. Yeah, they're like the pinwheel skeletons. They're just massive. They never stagger. It's hard to predict their attacks. If they do connect with you, they take like half your health. Grooves are okay. They are nothing special. They are just filler enemy. Giant Archer might actually just be S tier. Because he helps you more than he harms you. And if you're not retarded, you can figure out the pattern. I really like enemies like this. Nah, he's not S tier. Fuck it. Get the fuck down. What is that? Oh, giant fly is offensively bad. You'll fight like 15 of them at once in the DLC. And like, no, just no. So frustrating. You either avoid them full stop. Or you get ganked down by them. What are you? These are the things that spawn the angels. And they're getting a B tier for creativity. No, C tier for creativity. It's a unique idea, but they could as well have not existed. Ah, giant slave. I could use a couple of those. Uh, giant slaves. Hold on. Ah, where you go? Okay. Giant slaves. They're not forgettable. I don't think they're B tier. Hmm. I think C tier is about right. They're not interesting to fight. They're more of a roadblock. Yeah, they belong in C tier. Maybe D tier even. Scholar. These guys coom on you. There's also too many of them, and they're surrounded by too many bonus enemies. A little too too gank hard for me. Half light spear of the church is a generic human boss battle, but as a PvP fight, it goes like up there into A tier. Oh my god, fuck these! Fuck these enemies, dude. They're not good. You avoid 90% of them and they gank like six of them on that one road. These guys suck. Havel the rock. More like Havel the cock. Generic human fight. Nah. I can't do that to my boy Havel. Psych. Havel goes up there. Gargoyle is going with the other gargoyle. Wolnir is just a bad gimmick boss. The moment you understand him, you're just like, uh, yeah, okay, I'm never losing to this again. Hollow Cleric. There, this is all C tier garbage. Ah, these guys have the saw. I love parrying them. It is so fucking satisfying to parry these guys. Hollow Priest. They're kind of annoying. They kind of don't matter. They're just generic crowd filler. Just move on. Just move on. Hollow soldiers. I am a sucker for hollows that belong to armies. The forgotten common man is what makes Dark Souls tick for me. Look, let's put it this way. This guy is not as cool if not for this guy. If you have to cut through 50 of these guys to get to this guy, he seems less impressive. But when you recognize that most of the world is comprised with just regular people who gave up hope, it makes the powerful bosses seem all the more intimidating. Like they're actual legends that exist. That's why I got the hollow and S tier, bro. You gotta put respect on their name. These guys are so fucking creative and interesting anytime they show up. I kind of feel like they get A tier just for being creative. <gasps> oh, hiccup. Hickey. Uh, Index Gundir. Is the best tutorial boss they've ever done. So I think he gets A tier for that. What 
the fuck are you? Oh, these enemies hit way too hard for what they are. You'll have to fight like three of them at once with a fire witch. And for some reason, they take like 30% of your health. Fuck this enemy. Fuck this enemy. Worst design enemy in Dark Souls 3. Oh, let me take 40% of your maximum health away just by looking at you. Yes, yeah, very cool. Judicator is cool, but also kind of lazy. And I don't like dealing with it ever. Once you've figured it out, your mind has mentally solved the puzzle. It's just waiting for the barrage to end to move to the next safe point. Actually, that makes them F tier. Fuck it. It's the fact I don't like things where it's like I have mentally solved this puzzle already. But now I have to wait for the game to allow me to get to the solution. These are shielded invaders. Go into D tier. C tier for filler. I feel very strongly that Lothric Knights are A tier. They are the perfect upgrade to Hollow Soldiers. And seeing them side by side. No, you know what? These guys are the Dark Knights. They are the Black Knights of Dark Souls 3. Lothric Wyverns. They like might as well not exist. Uh, they aren't generic filler, but they're more an environmental hazard. Did they not put... Okay, I was going to say, where's the puss of man? There's too many of these guys, and for some reason, they hit like a truck. I mean, I understand that they're literally hitting you with a fucking tree trunk, but like... Just this enemy is stupid. They should have had pitchforks, and they would have been a lot better. These guys are cool for the simple fact that they're a walking crucifixion and they only fight you if you, like, aggro them. They're really docile and chill, which is pretty unique. Mangrubs? Dude, these things exist to fill out the world in the worst way. Mad woman? This is the fucking enemy that charges you guarding the twin swords. Whatever. Generic human fight gets C tier. Man serpent. Generic filler enemy gets C tier. Millwood knights. Uh, there's a bit too many of them for my liking. Whenever you have to fight them, there's usually two more right around the corner. Hand hippos are really bad and annoying. I don't like them. They gross me out. There's a room where there's like three of them. Yeah, that room where there's three of them really sours the taste. Merkman. 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 Filler, 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 filler. Nameless King. If it wasn't for the first phase. This fight is S tier. Hold on, I have to. I'm sorry. I have to have like an S minus. These are the things that would be S tier. But they have something holding them bass back. Hold on. S tier. Hold on. Is holding them back from S tier. Because there are a few enemies where it's like, this is clearly an S tier enemy, but there is one thing. <laughs> For the lost sinner. It's the new game plus gank. For the pursuer, it's like the double pursuer gank fight. For the fume knight, it's the literal unreactable free slash that he gets and sometimes just focuses on. For the nameless king, it's the camera in the first phase. Like, these are clearly S tier fights, but like, there's just that one little quirk in that one little time where it's like, I cannot say you're as perfect as like these guys. 
I really don't like this boss. I don't like the mad flailing. I don't like how unpredictable he is. And I don't like how fighting him feels like a crapshoot. He's not outright bad like these, but he's not... I don't feel like he's good enough for C tier. Uh, this guy's pretty P tier. I like I like the, the old Demon King. He's a pretty chill fight. He's just a generic decent boss. I really like the design of these hollows. I just like them. I'm sorry. I do. I just like them. Satisfying as fuck to parry as well because of the big weapons. And they're not super punishing if you mess up and take a hit. Pontiff's knives are a perfect step up in difficulty at the perfect time in the perfect area, which they also match that area perfectly. Yoink. I don't think I need to explain this. This is the best fight in Dark Souls 3. Arguably the best fight. This boss is godlike. I, there's no way, there's no if, ands, ors, or buts about it. This fight is fucking fantastic, dude. Yeah, no, like, you can parry him, you can bait out his attacks, you can play around everything he has that's annoying. The summon, you can kill it and just get free damage. This fight is the ONS. It is the wall of Dark Souls 3. Puss of Man are way too random, sporadic, and they deal way too much damage for how often they attack. What are you? Rapier Champion? Bro, I, I do not remember this guy. Go into F tier for forgettable. Ooh. Oh, I feel like these are A tier, dude. These things were memorable as fuck. They're always fun to fight and they're always hella rewarding. These are just hollows in a graveyard. So C for, for generic. Ringed knights. Ringed knights are... Yeah, I think they're, they're one thing is they're just... They're so late in the game that scaling is to a nth ridiculous degree. They are overly punishing. You make one mistake, you lose 70% of your health most of the time. Rock lizards are bad. They take too long to kill. They primarily exist to try and roll you off of ledges. Stupid meme enemy. Uh, this is more slime. Slime enemies... Hold on, where is that? Okay, good. Slime enemies are always boring. They never pose a threat. They take forever to kill. And, like, there's just a lot of them to wade through. Root skeleton? Go into C for basic enemy. Spider crawler gets a B tier for the weird, freaky visual aspect. There's just, oh, they're just, they're just weird. They're creepy. You won't forget them. But they aren't, like, amazing. Slugs are a bad filler enemy. Sir Wilhelm is very fun to fight. I like his armor. He's just not good enough for S tier. Not memorable enough. You don't fight him enough. And the fight doesn't last long enough. This lady is the literal exact same thing as Sir Wilhelm. I mean, come on. It's the final boss fight in the final DLC in the final souls. This is literally the guy that creates the Dark Soul versus the, the hope of a new world. Fighting at the very end of the world. Gale is genuinely up there with Manus. Like, straight up, Gale and Manus are like neck and neck. Ringed City Spear. Uh, generic human is generic. Sister Frida. There's just too much going on in this fight. When you have this fight down, it is an S tier fight. But like, compare this fight to Sullivan or Gale. And it's like, oh my god, dude. There's just so much going on. So many little tricks you need to know before this fight stops feeling frustrating. Dude, I can't wait to do Sekiro, because I can already tell you, Sekiro has a lot of, like, 
A or S tier things. Sekiro. Oh my god, I love Sekiro. Slime be sliming. Sl uh, skeleton ball be skeleton ball. I used to hate these. And I still don't like the... Uh, I still don't like the gank fight in the the one secret bonfire but the fact that you can draw them out with arrows and bleed arrow and there's creative ways to deal with them makes them really solid in my opinion oh my god elden ring exists dude thank god i'm not doing these two this would be like a five hour video the stray demon is getting a tier for the simple fact that it makes me very melancholy seeing what the demons have turned into Twin Princes! Godlike. I love Twin Princes. It is a fight I'm looking forward to in every single playthrough. Swordmaster. He's definitely A tier. Just for the simple fact that he starts off and sets the tone for the game. He bum rushes you in, uh, in Fire Link, which you think is safe. He's just a naked Swordmaster. Elegant. Simple. Yeah, he's just a generic human fight, but he adds so much to the atmosphere. What is this? Thralls! I don't like thralls. Thralls are annoying as fuck. And for some reason, the thralls in the tower hit so hard. This guy's just an okay early boss. That's about it. Fire witches, go into C tier. You are mid as fuck. Winged knights, they stand out amongst all the dead bodies that they stand in. Dogs are dogs. There's too many wolves. Also, the teleporting dogs aren't on here. I cannot give Yorm S tier in good conscience. While he is one of the best gimmick bosses they have ever done, he is still a gimmick boss. <laughs> and no, Sigward's emotional... Yes, I maybe got emotional with Sigward's story. And that is the only... Uh, that's the only thing making me consider putting him in the near S tier. The Wretch. Uh, is not F tier worthy, but it's not good either. Okay, now it's time to talk about my favorite From Software game. Had to change the music over. Also, this is not a... Uh, I really hope these songs aren't fucking copyrighted, by the way, dude. <laughs> I hope this video doesn't get an ad placed on it. Uh, this is Okami music, by the way. And I went with Okami music because Sekiro does not have a good, like ambient song to play okay armored warrior roberto wait come back where did he go green 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 psychotropic scanning for green bro the armored warrior like fucking disappeared <laughs> bro the armored warrior disappeared Yo, he actually just straight up disappeared. The armored warrior actually just disappeared. Hold on. Oh, there he is. Do I want him up in the like higher tiers? Not particularly. Yeah, armored warrior was a gimmick boss and he wasn't a particularly good gimmick boss. Ashina Elite? Go ahead, fight me. Go ahead, fight me, dude. Ashina elites are so fucking satisfying. They go for the itchy manji, and you're like, parry, parry. And then you hit them with your own itchy manji, and it's like, ah, and then you get them with the stab. Oh my god, they're so satisfying. Ashina soldier is like 
Dude, Ashina Soldier is like the best generic enemy they've ever made. I don't like assassins. They're frustrating to fight. There's too many of them when you do fight them. The bulls are offensively bad. The bulls are offensively bad, dude. Yeah, no, the bulls suck. I, I straight up the bulls are terrible. Turn, turn down for what? Turn the music down a little bit. Oh no, that made it louder. How about Chi Sweet Field? Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Desktop audio not picking it up. How about now? Okay, perfect. Yeah, if you want an example, by the way, of why I didn't use Sekiro music. Sekiro ambient music. There's, uh, there really isn't any. Fountainhead Palace is like the best one. I guess we can do this. Yeah, whatever, this works. I like these guys. I like these centipede dudes a lot. There is, once you get into the rhythm of parries... They are incredibly satisfying to fight. Ogres. The chained ogres are the most Dark Souls enemy in Sekiro. But the fact that they're so hard countered by fire is honestly kind of cool. Corrupted Warrior. I kind of don't understand his mechanics even to this day. So personally, he gets D tier for me. The only thing holding Corrupted Monk back from A tier is the fact that he's so cheesy. Snap seeds, uh, firecrackers, etc. Or no, wait, that's the Ghost Monk. Is the Ghost Monk on here? I don't think the Ghost Monk is on here. This is the the Corrupted Monk from the, the one area before the like Fountainhead Palace. This guy is super cool. I love fighting him. I love using the tree to my advantage. Cricket? F tier. Fuck Cricket. Demon of Hatred? Figuring out the mystery of who this guy is is something I'm not even going to spoil now. Use it, and once you figure out that mystery, you can figure out what prosthetic, like, instantly stuns him, so it, like, instantly takes a health bar off of him. And it's like... Oh my god, this is the perfect boss fight for a Souls game. A long mystery spanning the entire game leads to in just environmental storytelling where you can figure out a way to deal with this guy. And you can ignore like half the fight. If you, And if you don't do that, he is insanely difficult. This is the best gimmick boss they've ever done. And I can't put it into uh, S tier or near S tier because it is still a gimmick boss. But this is even better than Yorm. I'm not going to lie. Dog is dog. They've never done dogs good. The big fat guys are... They're either B or C tier. But they're not bad. No, nah, I think they're B tier. They're unique enough. Damn, see, this is the thing, man. Enemies in Sekiro are either, like, bad or just really addicting to fight because of Sekiro's better combat. What are you? Oh, the monkeys. The monkeys, dude. The fucking monkeys. Figuring out the monkeys is an amazing experience. Fighting the monkeys after you figured them out is a little frustrating. And it's a puzzle boss. Uh, no, I gotta put him down here because it's another gimmick boss. It's another, it's the unique Ashina Elite. So this guy gets almost S tier. They just don't have enough health. Oh my god, the giant chickens. The giant chicken is the first C-tier Sekiro enemy. This is not a family guy giant chicken situation. Uh, 
Oh, no, wait. These are the folding screen monkeys. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Honestly, I think both of these guys belong here. Nah, monkeys are just B tier. Yeah, yeah, monkeys are just kind of B tier. Gecko is not really an enemy, so I don't know why it's on here. All of the generals are either A tier or almost S tier. Because these guys are basically pseudo boss fights. They are the quality of boss fights just packaged in the mini boss thing, like the Sekiro mini boss package. It, these guys could just straight up be full on boss fights if they were just off to the side. And that's what they did. In Elden Ring, these guys would be boss fights. Oh, Genichiro, one of my favorite characters story-wise that they've ever made. I fucking love Genichiro. Test subjects are unique because you can't really kill them. We'll put them in B tier because you can't kill them. I don't like the giant carp. It's boring, it's lame. Once you've once you've done it once, it's like I've mentally figured this out, so I'm checking out. Like I know how to get past this. I just have to wait for the game to acknowledge that I know what to do. Same with the uh, the giant serpent, however, is very different. Because yes, it's the same thing, but god damn is it tense. It's also a boss fight. And the boss fight is pretty good. I mean, come on, this this goes without saying. He uses your own tricks against you. You have to respect his ninja tool so you can't go all offense. He is a perfect test for everything in the entire game. I love Guardian Ape. Go ahead, shoot me. Guardian Ape is another good test. So, Al will test your basic understanding of every game mechanic. Ape tests your knowledge of the prosthetic. If you try to fight Ape without using the prosthetic or just spamming firecrackers, you're in for a bad, bad time. And people got filtered like a motherfucker. But if you're creative, there's three prosthetics that absolutely melt him. Like we're talking speed kills in like 10 seconds level of melt. <coughs> and uh they all make perfect sense when you actually think about what the prosthetic does and how this boss works god i figured some of them out on myself they were that obvious ah uh, this is the first boss uh the first boss is definitely not offensively bad he's just kind of okay he's not good he's not bad doesn't really stand out Oh, are these the monks? Ah, uh, these are the monks with the hammer. Do they not do the non-hammer monks? They don't do the... I don't enjoy the hammer monks as much as I enjoy the... Hold on. Do they have the regular kung fu monks? I'm not seeing them. Alright, these are gonna take the place of both monks. Where did I put him? Where is Hammer Monk? There he is. The monks are A tier and I enjoy fighting them every single time. I feel like such a badass, dude. They're, they walk up to you with their martial arts kick and you're like, deflection! And then you like throw ninja tool and then you dash to the side, hit him with one hit and they're like, whoa! And they fall to the ground and then you grab them and fucking rip their throat out. Geckos are geckos. I don't I don't care for them. Ah, these are the bandits. They add a lot of flavor. And they're just so satisfying to fight. See, Sekiro 
is satisfying because they can throw five enemies at you at once and it's like three deflections in a row you get one uh ninja art or one prosthetic in hit like all five of them two of them are stunned you execute two of them you lead that momentum into killing another guy then you deflect the incoming attack from the final guy who's recovered and that deflection is enough to take him down for the execution and it's like it makes these trash enemies so good and because they're so sparing with the amount of enemies they spawn it makes each one feel like a legitimate threat uh, except for these guys. These guys can fucking kick rocks. They just have a centipede in them, and that's their entire gimmick. And the centipede is not exactly interesting to fight. Ah, uh, these two are the ninja hunters. You gotta give A tier to these guys. You got to. I mean, I'm sorry, you got to. They they have so many options. You have so many options. There's never a dull moment fighting these guys. Hold on. There's two versions of Ishin. And I see they only acknowledge one of them. Well. That's fine. Because they were both going up here anyway. Ishin is the master. You are taking the master's place. And that's really all that needs to be said. Yeah, that's, that's the bottom line because I said so. Ah, uh, Lady Butterfly is just too early in the game to really achieve perfection. If she had come a little later in the game, then she probably would have been S tier. The fact that you can be a bitch and fighter and win by just running around and... Hitting her with heavy attacks means there's an easy, accessible victory if you're bad. But if you are willing to engage with Sekiro how the game wants you to engage with it, then you have... It is a fast-paced, high-octane fight just start to finish. Sekiro never lets off the gas. This is the first boss, or mini-boss. He's just kind of whatever. Long, long man is exactly like these guys. You know, just not long enough. I want more of it. Dude, there's a legitimate rhythm game going on with his uh, his attack. Man-eating carp are just the ambient enemies of Sekiro. Same with the Mibu villagers. They're just mid at best. Mist Noble. I don't like the Mist Noble. I think the Mist Noble is one of the few actual enemies that is F tier in Sekiro. Nightjar. These guys are the yo. Glad they exist. They're not on the level of these guys, but they're good. They're up there. Ah, the Okami Warriors. The ones with the spears are kind of annoying. The one that kicks the ball at you only exists to stop you from being able to swim around the area. And while I like that, the only way to deal with it is this enemy exists to stop you from having expressive freedom with the game. And I think that's just offensive for FromSoft's design. This enemy literally only exists to stop you from exploring the area how you want to. And to force you to play through 90% of the area how the designers intended. And that is just really shitty. However, these things are fucking so much fun to fight. They're swinging around. They're flying around. They're having a fun time fighting you. And it makes it yourself have a fun time. Uh, old Maid... Uh... What is this thing? Oh, this is Orin of the Water. Orin is an interesting boss fight. She teleports around a lot. Figuring out her gimmick is pretty good. Dog. Palace nobles are just kind of annoying. If they hit you with the debuff, then it's like, well, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh. Okay. Uh. Uh. I just got... Uh, this is probably a server message. 
Hold on. I don't want that flashing. How do I make that not flash? Whatever. I guess that's just gonna flash from now on. It's not like I really have anything to hide there. I have legitimately, like, one friend on Discord. Uh... Red Guard. These are the Red Guards with the guns. These guys are good. Ah, uh, these guys have the face. These guys are S tier. Sorry, but the thing with Sekiro is most of what carries Sekiro is the combat is just so much better than Dark Souls. So, like, when this enemy is a legitimate threat and a legitimate challenge, the Red Guard, they, like, they show up in a dramatic fashion. They're clearly a threat. They will kill you, like, as quick as a boss, unless you, like, master them and perfect them, and it flows so well. What are you? Bro, F tier for forgettable. All the sentries are just kind of bad. They only exist to alert. That I can't put them in F tier because they clearly serve a purpose. They alert enemies to break stealth. But like, I, I don't play secure like a stealth game, dude. I go in there and fight everything anyway. Seekers just kind of are mid. They're just kind of whatever. Ah, the seven Ashura Spears. Same thing with all the mini-bosses going to S-tier. Uh... Ah, this is the Red Guard boss. This guy hits like a fucking truck. Shinobi Hunter. I love this guy. You have to Hikiri counter this guy? Oh my god, I thought the page just fucking died. I was about to scream. Snake bites are really annoying. They have guns. They're just they're just fucking annoying. Same with the Sunken Valley clan. There's not much thinking that goes into these guys. You hit them once and they die. Spear Adept. These guys are just kind of overpowered. They just overwhelm you with attacks and makes them kind of not very fun to fight. Uh, monks are monks. Monks are A tier. This guy's called Tard Troop. These guys are incredibly satisfying when you parry their bell and that just like drops them right down on their knee. I don't like Headless. I don't like how Headless requires consumables to fight. Consumables which are really rare. Puts a lot of unwanted stress on the fight. I'm glad treasure carps exist, and they're basically the crystal lizards of this game. Monkey. 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 Dog. Alright, that's all for Sekiro. Man, this list is looking pretty good. Well... Now we have to do this. Oh boy. Alright. How long have I been doing this for? Two hours. Sheesh. Abductor Virgin. Their actual abduction. Ab abduction. Do we have to start with Abductor Virgin? No. I want to start with something iconic. I know who I want to start with. I know exactly who I want to start with. I just forget his name. The first boss that's like a wall. Hold on. I need to look his name up. Give me one moment, please. Elden Ring is a great game. I've got a lot of love for this game. Where is he? Margit! Margi Marge! Oh, homie. Here he is. Where am I gonna place this guy, you may wonder? 
Is he S tier for being an introductory boss? Is he almost S tier? Well, to set the tone for this, I think Elden Ring is the greatest game ever. It perfectly tickles my fancy and it does everything I personally want out of a video game. However, 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 however. I cannot lie. It has some glaring flaws. For example, Margaret cannot jump or be pushed off the cliff in his arena. However, you can fall off the arena. This is one of the few times ever in the history of Souls games where they gave a boss an arbitrary protection that the player didn't get. So you know that hard but fairness that they were going for? Yeah, Elden Ring is lacking a lot of that. There is a lot of things that Elden Ring gives to bosses to make them artificially more difficult. And that is going to hold a lot of bosses back a tier. Okay, now we can talk about the rest of this. Uh, these guys are clutter enemies. C for clutter. Abductor virgins, the abduction mechanic is confusing and fighting them is not particularly rewarding, nor are they fun to fight because they attack a lot, they hit hard, and their attacks can land behind you and they kind of drag it around and it's unclear where their attacks actually are. Something that Elden Ring massively fucking improved on was the NPC fights. Oh my god, gone are the days of Dark Souls 2 mid as fuck. It's literally just a regular like hollow with red skin on and more health. Alabaster Lords are forgettable as fuck, but they give you good dropping, so it's worth seeking them out. Okay, we have our first offensively bad Elden Ring thing. Why? They... Brother, in new game, just regular new game, one arrow from these fucking bitches hits you for like 20% of your health. They hit you in barrages, there's like three of them, and they shoot like machine guns. Least fun part of Elden Ring, swear to god. Albernax are clutter, but at least they're cool clutter. Black Knife Ringleader. Black knives are always fun to fight. They've got a diverse move set, and they they put you on your feet. Tarnished Eater. Uh, this lady does a lot of jump attacks, which not many invaders like to do. So it actually gives her a unique 50-50 when she walks or runs up to you. Ancestor Spirit is cool the first time, but that second fight really subtracts from the specialness of it. Ancestral followers, however, they get B tier even though they're clutter because they just give you so many souls. You like, you never want to skip them because of the amount of souls they give you. Ants. I mean, they're ants. Yeah, a lot of this non-generic like animals just kind of go into F tier for me because it's like, okay... The game doesn't really benefit from this, but, it, you know. Why is there an Estelle just chilling in a cave? I'll tell you. I don't think that's as big of a problem as people make it out to be. I really don't. Estelle is the... Ne is the uh, Estelle is the fully grown Falling Star Beast. So, and Falling Star Beasts are effectively an evasive alien species. So it makes sense that there's multiple of them, and it makes sense that there's more than one. However, I do agree, it subtracts greatly from the end of Ronnie's questline. I think the lore of Estelle is amazing, but I, I think he needed to be a unique model or have a unique attacks. Something. The fact that they copy-pasted a quest finale boss is really a big letdown. Even though it makes perfect lore sense as to why they would do that. 
Marionette soldiers. They're B tier. I like them. That's all. Baleful Shadow. This guy rocked my shit. And uh, it's cool fighting a beefy version of uh, Sexy Furry Man. Blyde. Yeah, I'm like I'm like seventy percent Nordic, so uh, you know I I I can pull out the 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 blides. Banish Knight. I love these. I actually have a video on my channel. Hold on, hold on. Putting out a guide on how to fight these. Hold on. Where is it? Filter. Elden Ring. Here it is. Look. Look. I actually have a guide on how to counter these. You know, I was going to go through every enemy in Elden Ring and make a guide video explaining easy, consistent ways to beat them. Honestly, part of me still wants to do that. That's actually the original purpose of this channel, was just for me to document game mechanics and explain them in a simple way. Uh, and, and then it downward spiral happened. Anyway, Battle Mage. These guys are fucking annoying. They, their spells have too much AoE, and why do they exist like only on the Hegel Tree, where you can't dodge them? It's like they just get free hits on you. Bear. Bears are actually the best attempt they've ever had at uh animalistic enemies. Dear. Beastman is unique clutter, so it goes into B. Black knives. As I said, black knives are always fun. Black Flame Monk is just kind of, again, it's a special enemy. They really add a lot to the areas they're in, making those areas feel like you're not supposed to be there. Bloodhounds. I don't think Bloodhounds deserve A tier. Nah, man, they're fun enough to fight. I, I always look forward to fighting a Bloodhound because I love parrying them. The bloody finger guys are really annoying and they deal way too much bleed. And because of the status effect changes, you cannot play defensive versus them. But you can't exactly create offense against them either. So they're just kind of annoying. Boar. Boar. You could see tier for creature. The dragons in Elden Ring are like every single one of them is S tier. However, Borealis has a really bullshit fog effect where it's sometimes impossible to get out of it. Genuinely. Like unless you start running uh, on torrent before the move even happens, it is sometimes physically impossible to get out of it in time. Broken statue. I don't... I, I The picture sucks. The picture is terrible. Oh, this thing. Goes D tier for bad clutter enemy. Burial Watchdog is a shitty boss. Like, it is just a shit boss. Burning Slug is just a bad clutter enemy. Celebrant. These are actually cool. This is the this is the definition of a C tier enemy. This enemy is not meant to be interesting. It is not meant to be super unique. It literally just exists in for that one area to explain what's going on there. You don't even have to fight any of them. But you it's one of the best soul farming places if you rush to it. Cemetery Sade gets C tier for being mid as fuck. These are also just kind of generic fantasy monster that exists. Chariot. Come on, you already know my opinion on this, dude. The fact that this is a fucking enemy where the only purpose of it is to goddamn just wait for it to pass you 
is so bad. I did not know that was this guy's name. Uh, this guy just kind of gets C tier. He's just kind of mid. Clay man is the literal definition of a clutter enemy. Clean rot knights are always fun to fight. Their dropping set is really good, so they're worth fighting. They give a lot of souls. And yeah, they're just very fun to fight. They're in a shitty area, though. Commander Nail. Fuck this boss. This boss feels like... No, you know what? This boss is offensively bad. This boss feels like you were designed to cheese him by mind controlling his two summons and f turning them against him. This boss is a Dark Souls 2 style gank boss. Fuck this boss. Commoner. I gotta put respect on him. I have to. I'm sorry. I have to. Crayfish is the definition of a clutter enemy. Crucible Knights. I, I first I was thinking A tier, but nah, dude. Every time I fight them, I can tell you where like all twelve of them are. They're just that good. Snail. It's a it's a snail. It's a C tier for crystal. Crystallians are just kind of bad. I don't enjoy fighting them. They've got a really lame gimmick. You just hit them enough and then they crack and then they become non-bosses. And it's like, okay. Deathrite birds. You know what? I don't like them. Bro, that peck attack is one of the fastest attacks in the game and it hits harder than some two-handed attacks do. Like, that peck attack is the only thing giving them any level of challenge, and it feels like they only stapled that attack onto them so that they weren't a total pushover. Uh, Deathbird is the exact same thing. This is the giant massive dragon. And this enemy gets offensively bad for how poorly designed it is. Just this, it's a very simple, sim, it's, it's, it's shrimple, really. This boss, if you can even call it that, you're intended to fight it by fighting the dragons. So if you fight this boss the way it's intended, then it's just like a gank squad. Just a gank squad of beefy, unstaggerable enemies. If you fight it not as intended, you get like enough souls to get to like level 50 within the first five minutes of the game. So this boss either is so easily cheesable, you accidentally cheese it and skip the first like four or five hours of game progression and it just kind of ruins the game. Or it's just so shitty that it's just a shit Dark Souls 2 boss. Deer. It's, it's deer. could see tier for creature. Oh man, I really have to use the bathroom. I hope that doesn't become a problem. Uh, Demi Human Queen is the definition of it's a boss. You know, it's a boss because it's a boss. Demi Humans are. They're cool. They're clutter, but they're cool clutter. You cut down a lot of them. Demi Human Chief is just that. It's, it's, it's clutter. It's mid tier clutter. Dragonkin soldiers. These are either like D tier or B tier. So I'm thinking D tier because they're not very engaging. Hold on. Is the dragon rot soldier on here? The one from uh, the lake of rot? Okay. No, they get D tier then. The lake of rot fight is such an abomination of a boss fight that it single handedly kills any chance of these guys being good. Dragon Lord Placidix. He's either almost S, S, or A. One of these three. Let me think. So, teleporting is cool. He's fun, satisfying. He feels very epic. He definitely feels like the Dragon Lord. I feel like he should be one thing that's holding him back from S. And I feel like that one thing is that he just doesn't have enough oomph. It's a problem with the Sekiro enemies. There's just not enough oomph to him. Uh, 
I'm I'm really on the fence, man. I'm gonna have to revisit that one. Eagle. It's a bird. Gets B tier for bird. Edgar the Revenger is really tragic. Dude, they did such a good job with the fucking NPC invaders in this. Every one of them has a story. And it's a good one. And it's not super hard to figure it out. Elden Beast. He's just not special. He's just not special. Like, I'm sorry, but he's just not special. He doesn't feel like you're fighting a god. Yeah, he's kind of a shit boss fight. Also, Elden Star's fucking horribly designed move. Elden Star's is a terrible move. Yeah, Elden, Elden Beast. Elden Beast, go down to D tier. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, Squidward. You suck cock, and you suck at cock. Elder Dragon Grail. Wait, then who is decaying Zeke's? Oh, I remember this now. I got these two backwards. Sorry. Sorry, decaying Zeke's. Let me put some hispec on your damn name. That is the Rot Dragon. All dragons in Elden Ring are pure perfect. Except for the one. The Briar is almost S tier. It is the fact that he's got that annoying ass fucking combo. Uh, that can be really unfair because it can hit you from off screen. Literally, if that attack was more fair, he would be S tier. Erd Tree Avatar. There's like five of them. And god damn it if I don't enjoy every single one. Errant Sorcerer Wilhelm. Who the fuck are you? <gasps> okay, these next two guys, I straight up don't remember them. So we're going to put them in C tier. The fact that I don't remember them, I would say F tier for forgetful, but I'm sure I would remember them with a tiny bit of a refresher. Oh, Exile Soldiers. The perfect trash mob. I don't know what you want me to say. They are just the perfect trash mob. They, they really do just feel like the perfect trash mob. Fallen Hawk's soldier is clutter. Falling Star Beast. Let's see. Is there anything interesting about the Falling Star Beast? I like their lore. The lore single-handedly saves them from mediocrity. Because as a fight, as a fight, they're kind of C tier. But as a package, they're kind of B tier. Farum Azula Dragon is a dragon in Elden Ring. But this one... You spend a lot of time just cheesing it by running in and out of the area right next to it. The Fell Twins? I don't remember these guys. I don't remember them at all. I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. I just hit the microphone. Are these the two fucking exceptional individuals in the, uh... Oh. These guys? Are the definition of mid? Okay. Festering Vike. It is, a uh, Elden Ring Invader, so it's automatically A tier. Fia's Champion is, uh, too much of a good thing, you know? You took something that was good... And you just gave me too much of it. And it made it not as good. I don't like the finger guys. I feel like the finger guys suck to fight. They're annoying. They have too much health. You can never stagger them. They just kind of get to attack you for free whenever they feel like it. And as a result, it takes too long. The Fire Giant is a gimmick boss and not a particularly good one at that. Fire Monk is a unique clutter enemy, so, you know, he goes up there. Same with the Fire Preachers. They thematically are consistent, they expand on the world building, and they don't exist for the purpose of existing. Flame Chariots. Flame Chariots are kinda not great. 
I hate to say it, you avoid most of them. And the few of them you don't avoid, uh, you know, it's just not very interesting. It's just an unstaggerable chariot. Flame Guardian goes up there with the other flame boys. Flying Dragon Agil. Yoink. Dragons are so epic in Elden Ring. Flying Dragon Grail. Yoink. They're just so epic. Riding around on torrent trying to stagger them. Foot Soldier is another perfect trash mob. Frenzied Villager is a uh, less perfect trash mob. No, because of where these guys exist, they actually get D tier. Fuck them. Fuck that area where you have to play hide and seek with the frenzied flame. Giant bat is clutter. Come on, dude. Where are all the bosses? Dragonfly is, uh, is bad clutter. Dragon, 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 dragon. Ah, uh, ah, uh, the miner. I like miners. Ayo, ayo. Ah, uh, miners, 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 miners. They're just kind of annoying. They're a fucking failure. F tier for failure. They're just annoying. They take forever to kill. Your attacks bounce off them. They're just fucking annoying. Glenstone sorcerers. Ayo, where the magic at? Godfrey, first Elden Lord. I just feel like he doesn't do enough to warrant anywhere near S tier. You know? There's just not enough going on in his fight. Godric the Grafted is almost S tier. He's just too easy. Biggest problem. Too easy. Where did the Godskin Apostle go? Where did the Godskin Apostle go? We'll, uh, we'll look for him later. Right now we've got the Noble. And I actually like fighting the Noble. I like fighting the Noble a lot more than the Apostle. He's a lot less annoying. Oh, there he is. The Apostle is just kind of annoying. If you get trapped in one of his uh, whoosh, whoosh, my Raffle Copter goes whoosh, whoosh, whoosh attacks, then you're just kind of fucked and there really isn't anything you could do about it. Golems are big guys that are not worth the time to fight. They get D tier. Grafted Scions. I have a video on my channel about fighting this thing. It's it's just okay. Great Horned Tragoth. What the fuck is that? Great Horned Tragoth. What are you? Oh, this guy. Yeah, this guy. This guy. Probably the worst NPC fight in the game. This guy. Yeah, that guy. Guardian. These guys are ultimately forgettable. Like, I cannot even tell you where they spawn. It's a bird. Gets B tier for bird. Being really good to farm. It gets B tier. B tier for burb. Highwayman gets, uh, gets B tier for being unique clutter. Imps get F tier. I don't like them. I don't like imps. They're annoying. They're hard to hit. They swarm you. Fucking imps. Giza is uh invader with little to no story to tell and a really annoying weapon if you get clipped by it juno hollow i don't remember these guys so they get c tier because i vaguely don't remember them ah uh, these guys are a tier fun to parry fun to backstab nice to space out they've got they leave you enough openings solid big guy enemy Fuck these enemies, dude. Oh, they're so bad. They shoot the spears out. 
the spears go and impale you and it's like okay and then there's like 15 of them in that one area in the hegel tree and it's like yeah i could have dodged all that land octopus gets c tier for clutter uh egg lesser dragon gets lesser s tier lindell knight I mean, come on. It's basically the Lothric Knight of this game. Lich Dragon Fortisax is not a dragon fight. But he is epic enough and has enough story relevance that he gets almost S tier. Lion Guardian is uh, not very interesting. Hmm. Where do you belong, Lion Guardian? If this game had parry like Sekiro, this would be like an S-tier enemy. But honestly, fighting it in the Elden Ring sandbox is just not very fun. I'll be honest, it's just not very fun. Living Jar is not really much of an enemy at all. Loretta is satisfying to fight. I like dealing with her magic. I like rolling her attacks. They did good with the mounted enemies. Uh, forgettable. Magma Worm. Oh my fucking god, dude. There's like nine of these. There's like nine of these things. There's like nine of these things. I mean, look. It's got some janky hitbox. That's what's keeping it out of B tier. I don't mind boss reuse. I feel like if a magma worm exists in the world, magma worm is not a unique enemy. It is a magma worm. That implies there's a lot of them. So it makes sense that we find like seven of them. But Jesus, man, you could have spaced them out a little more. Magnus the Beast Claw is uh, Magnus the B-tier baller. Who are you? You get C-tier for average. Clutter. Oh, boy. What do you think? Go ahead, write in the comments. What do you think? What do you think, player? Come on, player, player, flavor, flavor. What do you think? All right, hear me out. Her healing through block is stupid. I think just about everyone can agree with that. Waterfowl dance is stupid. I think everyone, I think we have reached the point where everyone has come to understand that the only people that are dodging waterfowl dance consistently are people that are putting in 100 hours specifically fighting Melania. Everyone else, it is completely impossible. I want to put her up here, but because I don't really view the health regen on block as a big deal. But no, seriously, like it is kind of a big deal. Blocking should be a viable counter to waterfowl dance, but it should be punishing. It should be a tax on your resources. However, because of how much health she will restore through the block, it goes from a tax to like... Okay, so she took half my health. Okay, I understand that. She, it takes. If I want to resolve the mechanic like that, I have to spend a heal on it. But why does she get like fifty percent of her health back every time? It's like it's like I actually lost like the flask plus all the flask needed to get up to that point, point. and that really sours the impression of her. The bestial claw being like an environmental way to parry him is so fucking cool. Man serpent is meeting his brother in the C tier. Marionette soldier is cooler than the other one. Because those ones have more detail. They actually have a head. Mausoleum knights are cool as fuck. 
They're just not rewarding or numerous enough for me to really put them up into A tier. Mimic tier. Fuck this boss. I am going to say something that's going to trigger all the casuals. You didn't beat Elden Ring if you played through it like one or two times using Mimic Tier for every fight. I don't care. If you had to res resort to the Mimic, you didn't win. D every boss from all the way from Demon Souls all the way up to Elden Ring is not designed with more than one player fighting it in mind. The AI breaks fighting even if the other person never fucking attacks. Just having another aggro target in the arena for the boss to target takes more than like 60 or 70% of the challenge away from most bosses. So I'm going to keep it real, man. If you played through the game with like bleed Uchi, Uchi Gatanas and Mimic Tier and you had four Uchi Gatanas nonstop r wanting the boss... You never beat Elden Ring. And that's something you're just going to have to live with. Oh, sure, you can be. The only people who are going to back you up and say you did actually beat the game are people who are trying to have a good social media presence, a.k.a. YouTubers. <clears throat> See, YouTubers love to say that bullshit where it's like, well, if it's a mechanic in the game, it's a valid strategy. Oh, really? You're telling me? That you viably, you beat the boss because you walked in with uh, the Kamehameha spell and you just instantly killed it before it got to attack a single time. How is that any different from walking in with cheat engine and one tapping the boss? You do not know anything about its moveset. You do not know anything you could not. If you had to fight the boss right now and live for more than a minute, you couldn't do it. You couldn't tell me what their attack patterns are. It's like if you did a mage playthrough where you spent half the game one-shotting everything, like you couldn't rate the quality of any of the bosses because they would all blend together and be the same thing for you. Mimic tier is just that, but for melee. So the only two people that say that that counts as beating the game and is valid are casuals who know that they can't win without it. So they have to say that to try and justify their position. Or YouTubers or people trying to get social media clout because they know that's what most people did. So that's the popular thing. So if they try to take a stance against it, they're just going to be called a toxic elitist. Even if it's objectively fucking true. Miners. Miners suck. The sprouts also suck. Misbegotten are clutter at the purest form. Mog. Mog is pretty dope. I like fighting him, but there's nothing too special. Nihil gives me an excuse to say the N-word. Wait, hold on. Slime. There's a slime here. Hold on. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. Turtle. Turtle might as well not exist, but I like it. Turtle's like ant. Sheep also might as well not exist. Skeletal snail is... It's a snail. Uh, these guys also might as well not exist. Wolf is wolf. Now, you know what? I actually really like... In, so, in Elden Ring specifically, I really like these ambient enemies. Because I feel like they add a lot to the game. I really do. The world would feel way less alive if there wasn't a bunch of just sheep running around, you know? Monstrous Crow. I like it. I like fighting it. I was very scared of it, but once you fight it, you go, wait a second. You know what? This actually isn't that hard. Monstrous Crow is when you really start to realize that you can, you're actually starting to master and overcome the game. And it's the exact same thing with the Monstrous Dog. I've got very positive memories of these two. Oh, fuck this guy. This guy gets offensively bad tier for very simple reasons. You can just cheese him with the elevator. And he is a parry god. It is impossible to do anything to try and open him up. 
every fight with him is either cheese him with the elevator or wait for him to make a mistake and then counter on it. Otherwise, you just get parried 100% of the time and it's not fucking fun. Morgoth just needs more health, frankly. Mounted Knights. There's just not enough of them. Nameless White Mask is a low-end invader. Bleed is overpowered in PvP. It's overpowered when they use it. Necromancer Garrus. F-tier for forgettable. Knight Cavalry. I want to put him down here because of the cheese. But as a boss fight, they're like up here. Nomad. I, you're never going to be fighting these guys, really. Oh, no, wait. These are the ones in the Madness Crypt. They're really good atmospheric enemies. But other than that, they're just kind of whatever. Non-affiliated soldiers. Literally the embodiment of what I'm talking about. These are people who literally just wander the world in search of fighting. They don't belong to a faction anymore. They have no friends, no nothing. They literally just walk around and attack things. They are the quintessential hollow. Uh, the Nox come out of nowhere and are very fun to fight. Old Knight Istavan has like no story and might as well not exist. Omen killers do more damage than they should. They just hit way harder. Ooh, Radagon. Radagon is such a smooth fight. But that triple attack... Nah, he's smooth. He's good. Omens. Omens are big. Omens are satisfying. Yeah, I'm fine with Omens in B tier. Oracle Envoy. Oh, where'd you go? Wait, Al. I didn't see this. Oracles. I like them. They add a very distinct vibe to the area that they show up in. Page. Uh, these guys get F tier just because of how fucking overpowered they are. If they hit you with like one vial, it takes like 80% of your health for no reason. These guys mathematically take off as much health on average per hit with some of their attacks as like the final area enemies do. and But they show up halfway in the game. And it's like, well, that's just a little out of place. Patches. Is a shield and spear user. So you can guess how much I like him. F tier for forgettable. Perfumers also are the same deal as pages. They just... They just deal so much. Perfume is unbalanced, by the way. Both as a player and for enemies, perfumes need like a 30% nerf flat across the board. Pumpkin heads are really unique. They're not the, the the most interesting enemies to fight, but they're just really unique. Putrid corpse is literal clutter. It's a two-handed NPC fighter in Elden Ring. Should be pretty obvious that he's going to be up there. The Red Wolf is just a much better Sith fight. But that's really all it is. Knights with spears are always a fun time. Because they really push you to parry. You get one parry on these guys and they're basically dead. And they come at you in packs. See, this is what they'll do. They'll put like one of these and like three of these next to each other. And it just creates the perfect combat encounter. Oh my god. Wait, what? Where is Renala? Where did Renala go? Right here. Renala is an offensively bad boss. I hate this boss fight. She's so easy. The first phase is a fucking worthless gimmick that you that you don't take any damage dealing with. The second phase is also a gimmick. You either burn her down in like 10 seconds or she summons a bajillion bullshit things. And it's like, oh, this turned into a gank boss. 
Revenant. Offensively bad. These enemies hit so fucking fast, it leads to them dealing more damage than the bugged dogs in Dark Souls Remastered. The Idol. It's a sorcerer NPC fight. It goes low tier. Rotten duelists are great. Smacking their giant axe away and then hitting them with an insta-kill feels good. Skeleton. Woo, skeleton. I like skeletons. Dog. It's a dog. Round table night, Vike. You already know. It's a diverse NPC fight in Elden Ring, so it's automatically really good. Royal Knight Loretta is just like the Tree Knight Loretta. It just doesn't hit as hard and comes much earlier in the game as compensation. Rune Bear. They're, they're, they're... Nah, Rune Bears are too strong, but you're not supposed to fight them. And they're not exactly fun to fight. They either stomp you or you stomp them, and there's really no in-between. Rikerd is a gimmick boss, so he's going no higher than A tier. Sanguine Noble. Bleed isn't fun to deal with in PvP. It's not fun to deal with in PvE. Scarabs. Most of them are in very unique places, and they're like crystal lizards. This enemy is awful. The School of Graven Mages. This sucks. You can never stagger it. You cannot see its attacks coming because they come from the sky. And they doesn't deal enough. It deals enough damage potentially to be a threat, but not enough most of the time for you to really respect it. So when it does just like molly whop you, you're just like, huh? Yeah, this enemy sucks. There's no strategy. Servant of Rot is just clutter. Silver Tear is just bad because they die in like one hit. So they don't might as well not exist. Sir Gideon off near the all knowing. You know what's holding him back from S tier? He staggers too easily and doesn't have enough health. But uh, Gideon can actually rock your shit. Let him finish his speech and treat him like a Dark Souls 3 PvP fight. And I promise you, you'll probably die to him at least once or twice. And what do I mean by Dark Souls PvP fight or Dark Souls 3? Dark Souls 3 had a two-hit system where if you hit one person, as long as you attack them again within a, like, 16-frame window, you, uh, you got the second hit for free. But then they would roll out also for free. So it's like, you know, ah, oh, dude, soldiers. I have never been disappointed fighting any soldier in Elden Ring. Jellyfish. Clutter. Uh, animal. Spirit caller is clutter. Okay, are we talking before or after the nerf? Because before the nerf is S tier, after the nerf is one thing holding him back from S tier. And I mean, come on, it's Redon. His story, his lore, everything about him. The fight itself can be a really fun gimmick fight with all the summons. You buff him up with a banner. Swordstress. What is that fucking picture? But I know what this enemy is. They're in the the the, the Twilight Zone. They're just kind of okay. Thorn Sorcerers have some really annoying spells that like to track and spawn under you. Tabby Mariner is just a non-boss. Tree Sentinel. Perfect because of where he's placed. Legitimately perfect because of where he's placed. Tree Spirit. Mm hmm. They kind of just flesh the world out. Trolls. They flesh the world out in a very good way by expanding on the giant lore. This guy's part of a gank fight, but it's a gank fight where it's two on two. So he's actually like the best invasion ever, I think. 
I hate this boss more than the bed of chaos. Fuck this fucking boss. This gank fight is the single worst boss fight from software has ever made. Hold on. Hold on. I am such a fucking hater of this particular boss fight. All right, right there. You know what? I feel like there's actually a couple things that belong in that tier. But no, seriously, this is perhaps the worst, most frustrating boss they've ever made ever. I have never had fun fighting this boss ever in my once, once, never, never, never. I've never had fun. I have never had fun fighting this boss. It, this I have never thrown a controller before, but holy fuck it. This boss doesn't make me want to. When you finally get a window to attack. The other one shoots poison on the ground and it's like, oh my god! This boss fight single-handedly takes Elden Ring from like a 10 out of 10 to like a 9.5 out of 10 mentally in my head. I hate this boss with a passion. Wandering nobles flesh out the world in a good way. Warhawk is actually incredibly annoying to try and hit. Worm face. There's not enough lore for them to justify why they're there. Wraith callers. There's like five of them whenever they show up and they just spam spells. Vulgar militia. Small, tiny, really hard to hit. And zombies. I like zombies. Well, that killed three hours of time and I feel a little bit better now. Uh, I never played these games or I would rate these as well. But maybe it's a good thing I don't because then this would be a four hour video. Yeah, all right. I guess I'll go find another thing to go talk to myself about.